media mode. Covers your story. Your story will be covered in the ground up. All right, we're back for another fire show. Now, you know I'm known for spilling tea and sometimes coming with a little shade, but there's nobody more shadier. Creatively shade, classy, sophisticated, cash me out, because she's been cashed out, shade, than my girl, Marlo Hampton. <laughs> now, everybody here, when you walk in, is like, Marlo's, she, she looks fire, she's dressed. Everybody know at this point you're known for fashion. Oh, yeah, I'm going to bring that. If I don't bring anything else, right? <laughs> Listen, you, you bring a lot. And then the crazy part is when I had my live show, Gagging with Jason Lee, when we were just being a complete mess, you know, we've elevated <laughs> Cappuccino. We had Marlo on. I told you then. I said, I said it, that you should have a peach and that you should have been a housewife. Been and that. now here we are. Your whole one year now you've been a housewife. Yeah, officially. one year officially after took, ten years. What took so long? I don't know. Damn, greatness takes time. I guess mm. you know something. Okay, so you were you 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 made your debut, I believe, season four of Housewives. Mm -hmm. and season then, four. Now you're in season fifteen. Yes. So it took ten years, but I feel like out of every friend to the show that's been on the show, you've held it down consistently for all the time that you've been there, and the fans know that. That's true. I even feel that. And I'm like, I've been, I held it down. It was with, with the housewives doing everything they do, bringing the drama. You know what it is, Jason, I think? Uh, I need a cocktail too, you guys. I'm like, let me get comfortable. Let this is family, child. Right I don't got to be all crazy. <laughs> Let's get our deli on. Mm -hmm. So Jason, you know what I think too? I think people could not relate to my past. Mm -hmm. I think with me being arrested, with me being just so straight up with how I say no filter, it was just a lot. I think it was a lot for the network, for the people. It's just like, oh my God, who is this Florida girl coming just so uncut? You know, I fit in right with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's the thing. Network. Let me tell you something. Your best part of the franchise mm -hmm. is Atlanta. That for me, I know that when it started, Orange County was they was the girls. Mm -hmm. We're tired of them. I know the one girl left, oh, she was we unhappy. Still love them. No, we don't. We don't. The people <laughs> who are. Black Twitter don't. Black <laughs> Twitter loves Atlanta. And I feel like Y'all do love us. The, and we know if you look at Atlanta now, everybody getting Rico. So you were kind of before the times. Mm -hmm. You were getting it, you know, we all have been to jail. I have a mugshot or two. Did they really care that you had a pass? You know what? No one said it, but I feel that was the issue. Think about it. Why didn't I get a peach? Right. Why did I never receive a peach? I came on fashion. I came on fabulous. Why? So it had to be that. That's the only thing I could think of. And it just makes you feel like you got to think about things that happen in your life because it can be held against you. But are you the only housewife that allegedly stole in the past? Or that I never stole a No! <laughs> I still <laughs> I'm sorry, been booked in jail, been to prison? I got in a fight. I did write a check for the college I graduated from. You wrote a check for what? For my book. It was $150, but I changed you my address. You wrote a bounce check? <laughs> yes, that bounce. Marlo, you bounced $150. I was in college, and my address was incorrect on the check, so I never got it. <laughs> wait, so wait. I thinking about Marlo writing a bad check at this point because we know you got money. How much these boots cost? You know what? That I don't know, but I'm thinking that's how you know three thousand dollars maybe. I think three or four, but I really don't be knowing. Three thousand dollars for some I think boots. Balenciagas. I know, mm. crazy, right? We've come a long way. We've come a long way. So, but I heard somebody <laughs> tell me that you were offered the peach before, though. You weren't offered the peach before. Okay, you know what? I'm so glad you brought that up. I was offered a peach before in my living room with Nene and Grant Leakes. And, you know, I was rich, rich then, a little more money than what I had now, you know. So when they said in the living room, Nene's like, Marlo, take it. I'm like, no, not for what they're offering me. Hell no, this is an insult. It's not even a Birkin bag, or it is a Birkin bag. So I didn't do it because the guy I was dating at the time, he just was like, no, you can go over there and have fun, but you're not accepting no contract. So I said no. And then I guess after we broke up, I'm like, dang, this is like a part of my family. I want to be more a part. I want a title. Because the world made you, you know how the world is. It's yeah. like you have to have a title. But you, you had earned to, it by that point. Yeah, but I guess, I don't know, maybe, I don't know what the hell happened. But at the end of the day, I was offered. I didn't accept it. And it took 10 years. I got it now. And I just feel everything really, Jason, it's all about timing. Mm. I feel this was the time for me to get it. But the man that didn't want you to do the show at the time that you were dating, who was that? That was the older white guy you Okay. Today. That was the billionaire. Exactly. So when you're dating a billionaire and you're, because life is different when you're dating a billionaire. Mm -hmm. I've never dated, I've dated a hundredaire <laughs> or a th maybe even a thousandaire, but a, but a billionaire. Mm -hmm. When you were dating the billionaire and people were making it an issue that you were getting 
taken care of. Mm -hmm. Not that you were getting completely taken care of, but mm -hmm. that he's doing stuff for you. I was getting completely taken care of. I still work though, because where I'm from, the I can never be dependent on Jason or you. I still just got to have my own money. But we're going to get to foster care in a minute, because mm -hmm. once you go through foster care and you don't have nothing and you learn how to get it for yourself and mm -hmm. survive, you don't lose. You, you, you always don't. keep a bag. But, but when you were getting taken care of, why were people making that an issue? I find the people that have a problem with people getting taken care of are people who don't have nobody that want to take care of them. Abs preach, baby, preach. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, I don't know why, and to this day, I don't know why. Because if you think about the girls, that's all they talk about. Oh, she dated an old white man. She, Literally, dated, that's the only thing I've ever I dated heard. one older white man, yeah. one, yeah. who took care of me amazingly. was an amazing provider. Yeah. I mean, homes paid for, my mother's homes paid for, taught me about credit like my grandmother. I still didn't live above my means. Like my townhome I've had since the day I met him. I could have had a big, huge mansion, mm -hmm. but I'm like, no, nope. where I come from with foster care, you know that I'm like, nope, I'm gonna stay somewhere I can afford, I can pay the bills. And that's why I've been able to shop and mm -hmm. just not live above my means. Mm -hmm. But I feel like when you think of, again, there's people like, we know Naomi Campbell, she's rich mm -hmm. in her own right and has her own thing, but she was dating a billionaire from Russia. Absolutely. Nobody made that an issue. Was the issue the age? Was the issue that he was white? Was the issue that it was you? I think it was it was Marlo. Mm -hmm. I feel you love me or you don't. Mm -hmm. And even for our black women, I feel a lot of them don't support me like they should. Mm -hmm. I feel that when I walk in a room, they're looking, they're frowning. Not until lately, I have an amazing group of black women who have now just come supporting me, showing me love. But it's sad to say, the majority of white women show me the most mm -hmm. love. They're there to support me. I want to see me prosper and do other things. And it means a lot to me when a black woman does come up to me or they call and they're like, Marlo, this, or I see this for you and the boys. Because mm -hmm. say like Kim Page, Catherine Bruton, these are all love amazing women. Here. It's like a lot of great women I can name who have been so supportive since I've had my boys and just want to see me blossom and that means the world to me well, we're going to talk about foster care and taking care of your your um your kids i'm gonna call them your kids i know oh, you're yeah, monty but as my um life coach says she said like, you're uh what did she say nephew sons. she said these are your nephew sons yeah we're going to talk about them but this is what i want to say because it's interesting i feel like as pro-black as i am and as pro-black as you are because <clears> i mean absolutely. you support black all your friends oh my god but that i'm around a black you my team everyone. your team is black <laughs> we'll still get the most hate from our own. And I don't and understand sad. what that is. Is it jealousy? Is it just not really connecting because maybe we've grown through the concrete and now we're living a life that a lot of people strive for? What, well, you know what, what Jason, it? what I'm gonna say is when I walk in a room, I'm, I usually always have on a five inch heel. I'm coming decked to the nines, even if I'm sad, if I'm depression. Even at a hell. hookah lounge. I mean, anywhere. It's <laughs> like, and I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it for things I'm missing in my life. Or if I had a bad day today, me dressing up makes Marlo feel good. Mm -hmm. So I want to come in. I want you to say, oh, girl, you, boy, you look good in that Dior. You're cleaning that white, you know. Yes, Dior, he has on Dior. <laughs> I had to tell. I didn't peep it. <laughs> so I just feel our women, we need to praise each other more, celebrate each other more. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I think, <sighs> for example, let me tell you this. When I was dating a white guy, I got into circles I know I never would have been in, mm -hmm. in, invited to. Mm -hmm. And I know it's because of the checks I was writing, me being invited to Paris. Because you were doing the, philanthropy? or I, Absolutely. Okay. I would be at Neiman Marcus at the NBF. Uh, Neiman's flew me to uh, Paris to my first fashion show. Uh, I'll be uh, Andre Leon Talion. I'll be having private dinners at Louis Vuitton with him. Like, I've been doing this a long time. Mm -hmm. And I don't brag about it. I got pictures and everything I can show mm -hmm. of the things I've done. So I just feel it's like who you're married to or if you're dating someone. You know what? I'm Marlo Hampton, mm -hmm. and that should be enough. And that's and I think that's a testament for women. And I'm not just saying that because I'm friends with Marlo. Let's be very clear. If I am biased, it is mm -hmm. what it is. You'll eat it later. I feel <laughs> like women need to stop allowing them to be defined by a man. Who they're married whether to. It's, whether it's Sierra with Russell Wilson. Yeah, that's a great relationship, but Sierra's still Sierra fabulous. on her own. Still fabulous. She's, had a name before Russell. Right, and I feel like when it comes to women, specifically black women, I feel like women are often defined by the men they date, the type of man mm -hmm. they date, and I, and I don't know what that is. And not to hate on it, it's amazing to be married if that works for you. I don't see marriage mm -hmm. in my cards. I don't Even today I'm, you don't? Oh, no. I see someone very wealthy, someone I'm dating. I'm 47. I'm not what trying to... Mean? I just don't feel like, oh my God, I'm going to fall in love. Just give me a friend, a partner. Let's have fun. Y'all are no good. Y'all are going to cheat. You're not going to be faithful. So let's have fun. I can be your number one friend, you know? But why you didn't do like all the other housewives and get an African in, in Atlanta? Because no. all of them was getting Africans and... <laughs> 
I dated an African before, but that just wasn't for me. That's like a trendy thing going on right now in Atlanta. In Atlanta. It's so trendy. I feel like a fleet. Everyone of, wants an African. In I Atlanta. feel like a fleet of boats just pulled up at the dock and they all got off with Rolls Royces. I mean, and really, half of them are groupie as hell. Uh. I mean, half the guys in Atlanta Africans they just want to be on TV. They want to date who's popular, who has the labels, who has good credit to help with their illegal money. So it's just it's crazy. It's just not for me. I want someone with legal money and I can just spend his and use his card and save mine. So back to you, Bravo. Real Housewives of Atlanta is the most entertaining part of the whole franchise. I love Potomac. I think they're right behind. And then I don't know wherever that one girl is who just got arrested for all that scandal. A mess. But I feel like with Housewives of Atlanta, like for a while when you were there early on, all the way up and through even more recent, like they got it right. And then they started bringing in randoms. Mm -hmm. I don't like LaToya didn't last. Did you see LaToya as a failure when she got there? You know what? I thought LaToya was going to be a great addition. You did? I did. You know why? I don't know as a peach holder, but I thought as a friend. Okay. Because she says was ever on her Jason. But she just drank a little too much and I cursed her ass out. And I was like, okay, uh-uh, this is too much for us. But she still ain't told us if her kid is allegedly not by her husband because that's what her boyfriend came on my show and said. Wait, Latoya don't have a husband. Oh, wait, one of those kids. Remember the, yes, by the by the man that she had fell out with. He came on my show and said that. Because she has like three or four, right? Well, one of them ain't the one who think is his, allegedly. Oh, Lord, allegedly, Lord, allegedly. But see, that, but, but see that's why I feel like, have they played into that? No, they. yeah, if they would have that played into that. That would make you the star. Yep, that is true now. And then Tanya didn't last because her tea got spilled and she fled the no, scene. No, yeah, Tanya, yeah, she fled the scene because of Bolo. <laughs> right. Once they got that out, yeah. The, the I Bolo, never the saw stripper. Again. Yeah, after that trip, a lot of people was like, well, I'm out, I'm done, I can't take this. And I was sitting there eating the hog and listening through the door and peeping, because you know they grew up a big old huge pig hog. I was tearing the ribs up and everything. Wait, so on the trip where we're talking about Bolo, the boy with the big penis allegedly, yes. who was messing- Candy brought down. Candy brought down. See, Candy, Miss Candy thing. She know candy, what to we do. We know you coded nice. Yeah, Drunk, right? Friend got the freaking. <laughs> she got him on Hennessy. <laughs> it's the brown juice. The brown. And here juice. come Bolo. So, what did Bolo's penis? Was it really that big? No, it, it did look that big. It did. It did look mm. big. It looked Damn. big. Bolo, come on the show. I met your. <laughs> I met your ex. She was. She was a producer on one of the Zeus projects, and I didn't. I didn't want to ask her in her face if your penis was big. But come on the show. Oh lord. So was they really playing with the boy penis, or was it? Chad, no. they had so much. Going in there was just too much. Everything happened there. You see, people didn't show back up. Porsche ain't talked to me since. She still don't like me. Really? Uh, Tanya left. It was just a whole lot going on. It was um, it was a whole lot. Candy so, but, was a master. To me, you should say she produced the episode. Mm -hmm. Candy was like, okay, I'm going to spend the money. I'm going to pay Bolo. I'm going to bring them down. I'm going to get these drunk because you know Candy don't drink. Right. Candy had the money. She knew what to do. So the producers left, but didn't know they had cameras up. We are at work still. Right. And the cameras was rolling. <laughs> oh, they was rolling, baby. They was rolling. <laughs> they was rolling. But isn't that one of the rules? One of the rules of, of reality TV is mic is always hot and cameras are always rolling. Okay. And they, Unless you're in your own car or in your own house, shut the f up. Right? Shut the f or either don't be ashamed of who you are and what you like. Right. I just feel when you just are who you are, you own it, just enjoy that mm. and go. And I mean, they just, they couldn't own who they really were. Should Kenya keep the cameras rolling and hair and makeup so we can see what she looked like without the beat? Jesus. Did y'all make me a cocktail yet? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm working Give with Marlo a life coach. This is no I'm, liquor. That's no I'm liquor working with a life coach now. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm trying to be better. I was at Neiman Marcus the other day. By the way, shout out to Neiman Marcus. Can you please give me. I love Neiman let Marcus. Let me and Marlo go to all the fashion weeks. Oh, yes. I'll, I'll yes, spill the tea and she'll speak fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all sponsor it. We'll air it on Hollywood Unlocked. Pay for it all. Oh, yeah. Because yes. they do that when you're a VIP Rebecca, member. Rebecca, I'm Paige, a VIP member. Make it happen. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> okay, no, I was at Neiman Marcus the other day and I was shopping and I had this cute, two cute guys with me. And I walked outside and there was a girl sitting there. She looked real sad and she was just sitting there waiting for her. She had her luggage. It was Kenya Moore. Oh, you saw and, Kenya. Yes, I saw. Well, I, I thought it was Kenya. Well, it was Kenya, okay. but I didn't know it was at first because when I did a quick glance, she had no beat on, and her skin is. A, and this is not allegedly. Kenya Moore's skin without makeup is really not cute. It's not. You've seen her without makeup. No, I just know she has large pores. But she's a Barbie doll. She is a black Barbie, even though we are not the best of she's friends. She's beautiful. I think she's a beautiful. She's beautiful Barbie doll. when the beat is on and the outfit and all that. But she's not gonna take the beat off and look at the camera and say. It's been a struggle. Like she's no, not going she won't to do that. She won't do that. And I think it probably would be best if she don't. 
Yeah. I like her when she's beat and she just looks like a gorgeous Barbie. Yeah. Now, you and Portia used to be cool. And y'all fell out because you became cool season 13 with, with Kenya. With yeah, Kenya. well... I became cool with Kenya, but there's always, it was propaganda just using me to, you know, talk to her about what, you know, to team up with her on what was going on with the ball. But I blame you, because I told you on my show. You did. You I did. told you Jason, on my show. You did tell what I me tell that. You, what I Because I was like, no, Kenya's sweet. We're so much alike. And you're like, uh uh-uh, don't trust her. Don't trust her. Damn, JC, you did Didn't tell, I tell you me that. that. You did. But for see, real, for Mar- real, y'all, he told me that. Marlo went to the store. They That's handed so her a peach, and she said, I'm going to come and give all these a fair chance. <clears throat> I did. And, a, and the Bible says, warning comes before, before destruction. destruction. Damn it, it did. But she won't fool me again. Okay, so she, won't fool she me became again. cool with you and then she played you and then... Played me like a fiddle. <laughs> and, then, and then you and Portia fell out. <laughs> and then and Portia fell out, yep. And now her and Portia cool. Really? <laughs> yes, they're best friends. I mean, they're cool. But what was it that Kenya did that betrayed... What was it that Kenya did to betray you that you started... Where you started to see early on like, okay, this is about to go left. You know what it is. Kenya is the type. She knows how to, um, damn, she's good. I don't even know how to describe that damn heifer. She's good. When she needs you, she's going to come and call you, be sweet, use me for the fashion sense, how to uh, decorate. You remember her Kenya Moore hair care um, mm-hmm. with the white dress on, mm-hmm. the promo bulletin board? Those were my YSL cuffs. Call me to help style her for that. She got it from your... Yeah, that's, I have them right now home in my... Well, no, those are in my showroom. Okay. The big, huge YSL cuffs. I think she finally changed it because she was tired of me telling everyone that I styled her for that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Kenya just uses you. It's just like a man that uses you. She knows how to be sweet and manipulate you. Then she knows how to turn it. Oh, my God. But she talked about my mother. She said awful things. And she said that I wasn't pregnant. And she's... Girl, stop going back 20 years. Mm. We didn't got over that. I apologized about that. That was awful. But did she do that to gaslight the audience? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And she keeps bringing it up. So it's like, okay, you haven't forgiven me. Just leave me alone. Mm-hmm. Just leave me alone. We're good, sis. Love you. And Jason, Kia and I story is so similar. Right. It's so similar. So In that's terms of how her it. mother abandoned and her exactly and all that. Yeah. The issues like that. But that January Aquarius and that February Aquarius, mm-hmm. I'm February. We're different. We have So you both are the same sign. T- totally yes, different, different months though. Okay. January is different okay. from Aquarius. Okay, so when so I always have an issue with people who come from similar backgrounds as me, like we do. Mm-hmm. But don't get the connection of how like it's we crazy. know we never had community, so we gotta be a community mm-hmm. for each other. Why do you think she always comes off as a mean girl that's always out just for herself? Jason, I'm going to be honest with you, and my manager is probably going to hate that I'm saying this. I, at one point, I was bothered by Kenya not liking me or accepting me. It's so many women. I was. Years ago, I was. Because, I mean, Miss Former USA, beautiful black young lady, can't never find a man, can't never keep a man. She finds him and pays for him, but she can't never keep one. Beautiful daughter. Um, but, but no, wait, I'm wait, shut, serious. wait, shut up, yo, what? yo. Okay, I'm gonna say this because I've been drinking a little bit now. I'm literally getting lit because I don't think I have breakfast. I think I realized I haven't eaten. Oh wait, y'all bring up some bread, yeah, bring, 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 bring me, a, crackers, bring me some kind of snack because if I drink all of this and talk to her, I'm telling you, I'm gonna burn the internet down. Not paid for a man. Did she pay for Mark? Not Mark. No, she didn't pay Mark. Mark got the hell on. She paid Mark without. was fine though. Mark, Mark was fine. Mark was fine. She did good with Mark. She, now. she married him. Had a gorgeous but daughter. But the old one. Remember the, the old one? Uh, what was that young boy name? Uh, oh, the killer. The, the, the alleg- he, allegedly. Remember the, remember the guy who was... Knock out, busting out her door. Matt. Matt. Matt, Ooh, Matt was going to And get. then the other guy, too. What was the other guy um, that she first came around with? Uh, what was his name? Walter. 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 I think, allegedly, she paid for them, too. Damn. <laughs> yes, but... um. Enough about that, child. I'm not giving her all that, okay? <laughs> but, why, but, but my question, why do you think people like that, just in general now speaking, who've been through what we've been through? Because we just did a live the other day about foster care stuff with her. And we're going to talk about that, too, when we get into that section. But I feel like like you, you have such a good heart, and I've seen it for so many years. Because not that Maybe because I'm closer to you or whatever, but mm-hmm. why do you feel that like people like that that have been through what we've been through don't commune with other people that have shared Jason, the same struggle? the answer is, to me, I feel... Women have to, with Kenya, for instance, people like that, she just can't accept where God has me at right now. Mm-hmm. She feels, the way Kenya was brought up, I think by whoever raised her, it was like, you're better than everyone. You have to, as black people, you do, you have to work harder. You have to read more. You have to go extra harder than the white man. We know that. And I feel Kenya's like, I'm prim and proper, and I try and be this way, and I try and be that. Then you get Marla who comes and 
This is me. I'm going to split the verb. I'm going to say some shit wrong. And I'm going to, I'm authentic in who I am. Mm -hmm. I've been to jail before. I'm who I am. I can get dressed and sit with anyone. She sits the best mm -hmm. of them. And I feel that she's mad. She mm -hmm. probably feels like, how does this get to sit on the same couch with me? Get the, you know, in the same circle. How did she earn it? How did she earn it? Mm -hmm. when she, so I think she's just upset with God about mm -hmm. that. This is, this is my story, Kenya. It's my story. It's where I'm at. And this is it. And I can't apologize for it no more. And let's be clear. I see, uh, I ran into Marlo. We were in Miami at this billionaire billionaire's compound at a poker, mm -hmm. some kind of fundraiser thing. I don't even think we cared wh why we were we there. We really didn't back then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remember? <laughs> Baby, it was a billionaire's compound. And everybody. And being our damn self. And I didn't see Kenya there. No, I didn't. I haven't seen her and Candy at a lot of billionaire <laughs> events. <laughs> No, it is because people, and it's crazy. Okay, I'm gonna see No, go but I'm gonna okay. tell you why I'm kicking. I'm kicking at this point because I come from nothing, literally Not, poor, dirt, here. abandoned, discarded, like thrown away. And to get to this, it's like and a certain is. amount of respect that you got to give it because we mm -hmm. all should be. We should be in jail on crack. We should be. We shouldn't have Jason, what we when have. when I walked in here today, I had chills. Yeah. I'm just like, oh my God, this is... Jason, I remember when we were, you were just hustling like me. We'll be here. You'll be at Floyd Mayweather hanging out. Yeah. We'll be at the pizza joint eating. You remember that <laughs> yeah, years of ago? of course, of course. So it's like, look at us now. But this like, is what I love about you, and this is what I have to say, and this is why I always love sharing space, because you've been consistent with me the whole journey. I'm in my process mm -hmm. now of evaluating, like, who's actually real anymore, because... Do you, do you have a relationship with me, Hollywood Unlocked, the show? Who? Like, m me, the person, I really feel like me, you, and Catherine, when we're together, at least in Atlanta. We're fighting we're about who's paying the bill. Ain't nobody trying oh to pimp God. nobody. Ain't nobody trying to use nobody. But I also feel love. It's love. It's, it's, and it's always over food or hookah. And it's always a good time. <laughs> and it's real. It's real. Authentic. So when you think about the Housewives of Atlanta, you know, I, I loved, like I said, when you were there early on before you got the peach, Dwight was also very entertaining. Where is Dwight? Is she still alive? You know what? I don't know where Dwight is. Mm. I haven't seen, yeah, she's still alive. Man. I Damn. mean, really? Talking about, he, he's still no, alive. because she was 100 then. She was. She just, <laughs> I love you, Dwight. You were alive, but like, you know, you were. You know what? I wasn't on the show when Dwight was around. No, I'm saying in terms of like the in friends Atlanta that around, keep it yeah. real in Atlanta who yeah, were like. Dwight would were, read you for filth and was authentic as hell. Yes. I thought he was extremely entertaining. And you. He was. What do you think about Eva leaving the show? Did you like. Because I liked Eva on the show. You Even though y'all had. Your we had our. And I feel that if we weren't on the show together, we probably would have got along. Mm -hmm. On the show, we just didn't get along. And I feel a lot of people come around. And at the time, um, when you're struggling and you've lost what you used to have and you're trying to get it back up, you tend to, um, what we just said, you're, going, you're, you're reaching for candy. Mm -hmm. who you feel have the most money or mm -hmm. who can help you up the ladder. And see, I'm not reaching for it. I don't care if you have 11 million followers. I don't care if you run Atlanta. You don't run the circles I'm in. So your money, you're not stopping anything I'm doing. Right. And everyone always comes with, oh, Candy has so much money. She's this. You're jealous. Or, Baby, I don't know about no vacation homes Candy has. She, it ain't the money I want. Mm -hmm. The money she has is nothing I want. Mm -hmm. I don't never see her vacation anywhere out the country. I've never seen on She the, goes to Alabama? Probably. That's why I probably seen that. But I mean, she were a while though, you know, so <laughs> I'm just We like, have a whole moment dedicated to Candy's Coded Night. So we'll get there and the old oh lady Lord. gang. But look, so Eva, you know, she's recently going through a she divorce. She's going to do a whole spoof on us once we do this. Who? Okay. Candy? Candy. We gotta make, she's going to make a bag off of us. Some kind of I know. Way. And for somebody that doesn't <laughs> like me, and for somebody that doesn't like me, Candy, you 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 did the whole Bobby Lights reenactment with Roland Ray. You do know I was executive producer on that. So girl, thank you for kill, keeping me cashed out. But look, we'll get to you. No, so, you know, it's just like when your haters is literally your step, your step stool, your footstool. What did Jesus oh. say? We know where you at. I stepped on you. But look, um, let's talk about no. The, the, where was I at? I know. Oh, maybe lose my track. On. Wait, no. So with Eva. Eva, she's going through a divorce now with her man, the mm -hmm. guy who was the city person, yeah, the le legislator, whatever. Um, do you think that she would be good to come back as we see her go through that, or do you think her time was she did you her know best? What? In the I love Eva where she's at now. Mm -hmm. She's an amazing actress. She's beautiful, mm -hmm. and I just love her there. I really do. She could come back with us, but I feel that I don't feel that Eva really enjoyed it as much. Really? I really don't. Because at the time, it's just, it was a rough time in her life. I think she was just coming on, doing what she had to do. She was renting one of my uh, girlfriend's townhomes and just trying to fit in. Now, um, Eva is making the money. She's shining. She looks great in her position. Beautiful kids. And I feel like she's just on to 
something different. Wait, she was renting one of your friend's townhomes. Mm -hmm. Then they, then someone on the show said it was an Airbnb? Yeah, well, no, she was renting someone's house. But they said she Town was home. They said she was an Airbnb. Oh, Lord. Well, it might have been some, it might, she probably was Airbnb stop, in it from the girl. Stop counting everybody's coins. Let people yeah. do what they do. Okay. Do what they do. Like, she got the hustle in her. Like, I feel she has a hustle in her. Eva comes from the hood, like us. She and that's why I really up. can relate to it. And I wanted to say, damn. I know I don't, I don't have all the followers like Candy, but you could have came over here and still rock with me. But she's like, she'll go off on me, baby, if I mention anything about Candy. I'm like, okay, girl. Still to this day? To this day. She she definitely will in the blogs, not in front of me, not in my face when right. she see me. Well, okay, so you and Portia fell out. Mm -hmm. Are you you and Portia? Because I, I saw Portia recently <clears throat> when I was in Atlanta at Nunes. I didn't fall off with Portia. I just saw her in the nail shop like a month ago and I spoke. And, and she I spoke have, back? I, yeah, she did. Okay. We were in the nail shop and I spoke. But um. Portia doesn't like me since the Kenya incident with Bolo. But I like you. I feel like you and Portia would be good with Judy's. Like she's, oh, yeah, good Kiki. Yeah. But one thing with Portia, Jason, I don't know if you remember back, she had tweeted how, like, when she first came on, she said, I only watch the show because of Marlo. Portia lived for me, loved me mm -hmm. to death. But then when people come on and meet me and see, you can't control me, you can't control my mouth, you know that. Mm -hmm. And I deal with some boss sisters. Mm -hmm. Catherine Bruton's one of them. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're authentic. I'm like, Catherine's sister, that's up. this is wrong. But we're so authentic and yeah. we love each yeah. other and we want to see each other grow and we can be real. But with these girls, when they get to a certain level, they want you to be quiet, to be their hush girls. I don't know what the hell they want, but it ain't can't happen with Miss Hampton. Right. So... She just, Portia blew up and was like, now look, I'm not friends with her. You're not going to, no, I'm going to be friends with her. I want to be mm. friends with as long as she doesn't know your business and I'm loyal to you, that's all that should matter. But do you wish you would have listened to her now that you know what you know? I wish I would have listened to you and her, mm -hmm. but I'm okay with the friendship ending because it wasn't authentic. Yeah. After I apologized to you and said, hey, I fucked up, you were right. You told me. You told me before, Portia. Yeah. But you I didn't. I didn't feel happened. like I wouldn't be your friend. Like you have to let your friends. Yeah, you was like, all right, girl. Okay, Good okay, luck. boo boo. I see you back over here talking about it like right. you are right now, on my show. Right. <laughs> but I think there's also something to be said about people who want to have their own true, authentic experiences. Like yeah. I gotta have my own walk and see what it is, and then when I see what it is. Then I know for me, it's literally that I like a child. Yeah. Your mama gonna tell you, don't go out here and do this. Don't you got to go do it? You got to just go touch. It's, it's gonna burn, but you want to touch it. You got to mm. burn. So it is what it is. You live and you learn. So let's talk about Miss Candy. Oh, so now the Candy, candy Camp gonna come get your ass. Wait, well I'm they not really worried about. They're all old. all Candy's fans are all old and tired <laughs> and washed up anyway. Ain't nobody worried about that. Let me tell you something. Let They're me all... ask you the questions yes, for Candy. Yes, Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> ask me anything you want. You ask me the question, I'll ask you. And let so me, but let me first today. start by saying this. I love Escape. I still play I Escape so. here in the studio. I'm a fan of Candy as a singer, even though Tamar said you can't sing. I, you think I, she can? I love the fact that Just you have built a brand and done everything you do. You're a phenomenal songwriter. I got to get all this off first because they're going to say out. Jason Lee hates black yeah, women. Yeah, give her her props. Okay, you're a great singer, great song. Well, you're, you're a singer, you're a great songwriter, you are a very successful entrepreneur, and you have held the peach for a long time. A long time. Now, with all that said, because she's put it out there that I don't like her and her fans, of course, all these old, nasty, tired-ass church yeah. mothers then found a little Twitter, oh, and the here they go talk. people. Yeah, all on my Twitter. The thing about me Jesus. is I don't care about the smoke. I want all the smoke. But, you know, she gaslights people. You're extremely manipulative. We're going to get into that in a minute. At least these are my opinions. Whatever. Oh, I feel so okay. good not saying that. Yeah. Keep talking. No, I, no she, people, people, she has them tricked. She has them fooled. It's like she has some kind of voodoo on them. Yeah. Some kind of spell. Yeah, but, so you know, one of my co-hosts on my podcast, Blue Toulouse, she was a witch. She did this spell all the time so i already know that's been, why i think i work I think with the candy, witches you know candy a good old country girl she's definitely going to see somebody yeah she got something yeah so let's something. talk about let's talk about candy let's be crystal clear on this one candy is like a sex freak she's the type that like you got to lick right here and you suck a toe and you uh i'm like lick on the, she told all of us when they when your man gets out the shower lick under his I ain't licking under the lick it under his armpit yes and when i google that's it, a it filthy really type is. of level I'm saying, and it's all about mind control. Like, I remember one day Todd was with us, all of us talking, and she was mad because Todd just one day wanted to just, he just wanted to get it in. Yeah. And he's like, babe, I just want to get it in. And she's like, well, no, it's just, he be drunk, and I want him to know that I can do it good, and I'm going to make him come in four seconds. He's like, I know, but I be drunk sometimes. I just want to get it in. I don't want to do all that licking the toe and twilling the ear and blowing in the hair. So it's like, she just needs to get to come. You know, yoke up, get it, get yeah, it. Yeah, just take like, and go back to work. She's very masculine. 
Yeah, she needs masculine. To be, yeah, she needs to focus more on being a lady. Marlo, masculine. Yes, she is very. Well, she did have the deepest voice in Escape. Oh, she did. <laughs> I got a raspy voice too. So we just kicking, kid. Oh, I don't no, but if give you think about it, if you pay attention, I don't know if I have on panties or not. But sometimes, you know, when Candy sit, you just see like the man come out. She's like, I'm about to blow up in this. <laughs> you know, she's not my girl. Be a little cuter when you do your stuff. Mm. So when, <laughs> when her she Portia Phaedra, it. that whole movement, that whole moment happened when they all fell out. Where Portia, you know, what they said about the allegations that later Ken, uh, Phaedra said, or Portia said she heard from Phaedra that weren't true or was hearsay or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you think that K Kenya, I mean not Kenya, Candy was mad that the allegations came out? or mad that there were lies said about her. Wait, on what part now? Remember with the reunion where they, she had the whole moment where she was- The dungeon. The dungeon and, and the allegations that people were getting drugged or whatever those allegations I were. I would say this. Candy usually tells the truth nine mm -hmm. times out of 10. Mm -hmm. She's not known to be a liar. But like you say, she knows how to gaslight you. She knows how to make, she knows how to turn it around. She's smooth at mm -hmm. turning it around. Mm -hmm. She doesn't drink. She, you know, she make, she take notes. She's sitting there. So I feel that, I definitely feel they lied on her about that part. Okay. I do. I feel that if she did have it, I feel that all that helped her come out more with her freaky side. Mm. But I also feel she like was. she also came out with bed candy. She came out with a bedroom sex candy, line, yeah. a bedroom candy, where she came out with a sex line for people to pleasure themselves. So she was leaning into who she really is, a freak. Exactly. I Exactly. Now, she's definitely that. And I think at the end of the day, she should thank them mm. because... It made her a lot of money. Right. And she was able to just re release that weight off her shoulders. Because, mm. I mean, come on. I mean, one thing about it. Candy don't lie, not damn snuff don't lie. She is a freak. Yeah. She's a freak. And, I mean, at the end of the day, she's making a bag from it. It's good. It works for you. And I'm glad that you're at the point in your life where you can just be honest with who you are. Mm. So you called her a whore. Is she a whore now or she was just a whore then? No, she's a freak whore now. A freak whore? But not a freak whore probably with her husband. You think but they do threesomes? I think. What the f do you think? They do? I don't think. They Candy do has even said she does threesomes. With Todd? Yes. Todd, I heard, be tired of all the damn women in the He be tired. Like, she love women. Candy, I just told you, it's more like the man. But she pays well, so it is what it is. Am I right? Well, Todd was a producer on, on, on The Housewives, so do you think he holds the camera in the bedroom, or what, is he producing the no, sexual scene? I don't know scenes? what the hell they do in their bedroom. Now, leave them damn people alone, Jason. I, like, I do like Todd, you better get, <laughs> Todd's on my Facebook. I do have to delete him, because at this point, me and Ken... Ken Todd is going to come for your ass. I'm not worried. Listen, <laughs> I don't have my own problems. I got money. I pay for the problems to go away. Jason! So, no, let's, let's get here. So, because the thing that really bothers me about Candy is I'm one to text her, like, congratulations on winning Mass Singer or being, mm -hmm. congrat you and your daughter, on I, that was so cute. I would always text good, positive stuff. Absolutely. But when she was about to get in trouble with something, I gave her a heads up, even though she threw me under the bus. I've always looked out for her. All my, tech, all my texts have always been positive. I've always been respectful to her. And then she went on and told the audience that the reason why I criticize her being a boring, storyless, lazy, no good, needing to get removed, worthless housewife whose peach has been rotten, whose core of it, if you look in it, is not there, has gained green in it, is just wax so sickening. Um, yeah, I said something like that. But anyway, she now is taking it to where like I don't, I'm mad at her because she won't come on my show. She wouldn't give me more clicks in this interview if she came here anyway, because ain't nobody looking for her. We all trying to escape her from the show. So I don't understand why. She, I've learned that she's extremely manipulative. Is, is that your experience? <laughs> What's the next topic? <laughs> What's the next topic? What we were talking about your life coach? Let me ask you. You know, I'm in therapy. Yeah, you're in therapy. I'm doing great. How's it going? Oh my god, look at me. Oh, I, I mean, good. It's going <laughs> yes. day one. Um, no, about fourth month. I oh, mean, you know, what's I, the name of the therapy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Doctor Elliot. No, oh, I mean, Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> listen. The one thing that Doctor Elliot has helped me understand, if I have to be one thousand, keep one thousand, is he says to me, "You're not the your value has nothing to do with what you do and what you've built. It's who you are and what Absolutely. you've come through." And when I think about that, I'm going through my process of evaluating the candies who will gaslight me or do or try to use the opportunity to draw me into conversations on my platform that we would never have. Because we don't talk about candy ever. ever. 
Yeah, I mean, I talk about Starburst or like Jelly Bellies. Mm -hmm. Something like that. That's the candy that I like. M&M's. Ooh, M &Ms. the caramel M&M's yes, those are, are so great. Yeah. I love them. They're delicious. Those do you like those more than Candy Burst? I do. Okay, I got They're it. just so sweet it. and I, chewy. Yeah. And, mm, mm. I even like the ones with the peanuts. And you can mm. trust that they'll always be there when you need them. Always. And they're worldwide, for real. Facts. Facts. Let's talk about <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the worldwide. So at the reunion, this is what you, you doubled down on the worldwide thing. This is what you said. Candy's worldwide. It's just when I was saying this at the time, I was saying you're not in the circles I'm in. When we go places to Paris or London, I'm just saying we're in different circles. But she's known worldwide. It's different. If me or Candy right now go to Paris or London or something, I'm going to go to, I'm going to get in certain doors Candy would not be able to get into. I mean, if I go into the music industry right now in the hip hop, it's going to be different doors that open for me. She's more hip hop. But I know if I walk into anyone from R&B, hip hop, I'm not going to have any pull. Absolutely. So where's the lie? So basically, she's good in the chitlet circuit. You're good everywhere else. Absolutely. Damn. Let's move on. Um, now, <laughs> Portia was recently on The Breakfast Club, and they asked her, who are the housewives, if they had an ideal show? When you think about the all-star cast of what the next season of Housewives of Atlanta could look like, who would that be from your point of view? You know what, Jason, I'm going to be honest with you. This season, on May 7th, you will not be disappointed. Really? Including Candy. I mean, thanks to me. Really? I bring out the best in her. <laughs> I bring out the bring out the dinner. cavities. You okay, know let's go. The, oh, my God. I bring Actually, out the best Actually, we don't need to talk about Candy. And cavities. another girl even brought out the best in her. But this season, I promise you, this season, I can't even think about them recasting this group. Because it's so freaking good. It's really? new, it's fresh, it's different. You're gonna love it. You're not gonna be bored not one Sunday. Well, I I'll be honest, you. I'm literally only watching for you. Well, watch it for me. I'm, you're only, be I'm like, only watching for you. So this season with you all on The Housewives of Atlanta, you, you're saying that all the yeah, words I've used faces. about Candy being boring, lackluster, unworthy of being on the show, needing to be recast, needing to go find another job. I'm gonna change my opinion this season. No, but you're gonna say, Marla, you did make her work. She's not okay. gonna be as boring, okay. especially when she's with me. Whenever, no. think about it, when she's not boring, she's gonna be bringing up my name or it's gonna be something with her family. Mm. She's boring by herself. Like she needs her aunts and she needs me. Mm. Didn't somebody get shot or some of the old lady gang? You know what? Oh my God. Mm. That's a touchy uh, subject. Is it? Yeah, it's real touchy. It's close to home. So, uh, it's really deep. And that's one reason why we're having some issues. Got but, it. Um, you, you knew the person? About that. Um, no, I didn't know the person, but oh. the shooting was just something really deep. So just stay mm. tuned. That's definitely, this. like I just told you, it's a season you don't want to. But that's the reality of real television that we want to see, right? Real moments that we see in the press, but we don't know all, everything about it. And that's something she doesn't always want you to say. Like, you had a shooting at your restaurant. That's something the whole world knew. We, we wrote about it. I wrote about it. And it was like, with Candy, it was like, you don't discuss this. But, um, but then why be on a reality show if you don't want to talk about what's real? Oh, with her? It's like whatever she wants to talk about. You could, she could talk about anything with Marlo, anything with Jason. But when it comes to her, you don't talk about this. And everyone around her knows, be quiet. But well, I definitely, like I said, May 7, Jason, you have to see it. It was deep. Well, let me say this, Bravo, because I know what happens. Typically, sometimes y'all get a star on the show that tries to pull their weight and push people off. If y'all <laughs> push Marlo out for any shit, I will run a campaign to cancel you. Oh, I'm not Lord, playing. don't. No. What? You know what? No, Bravo I'm going to tell you what. I'm gonna, I'm, no, I know they Bravo have. And I, know, I know they have. And I know you're about to give us the whole one line. I get it. Let me say, <laughs> no, let me say this. Because for years, I believed you needed to be there. I feel like you you didn't come in and ask for a budget from the network to have your clothes. Mm -hmm. You didn't come in and, oh, yeah, and, 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 and manufacture And I don't wear tape underneath my shoes you, and return my things. Everything I wear is in my closet. Who does that? Um, I don't know, but I did see some tape underneath Drew's shoes yesterday. But Drew Sador puts tapes under her shoes? Yeah, she was like, oh my God, Marlo, we have on the same shoes. I'm like, yeah, but yours has new tape underneath your Giuseppe's. And I'm like, mine don't. I'm going to keep mine. Yours probably will be out of your closet. On um, Family Feud, you have to watch it. Yeah. Drew don't got no money? I don't know what she got, but I know them shoes going to be returned this year. Well, she wore them shoes, y'all. Not me stop. You, and you know what's crazy? <laughs> People at Neiman's hate when you buy, pull, and put back. Like, oh, I yeah. buy all this is my closet. Everything, everything in my closet is my, I don't buy and take back. I mean, it's different strokes for different folks, but it's like, don't come for me when you're really not that girl and you know I am. Mm. It's like, just give my props, you know? So you guys were here doing Family Feud. How was that? Yes, it was amazing. Did she yeah. have a family? Yes. Oh, she, oh, she has a family? family? She's going through a divorce, though, oh. unfortunately. Her man left her? I think they both left each other. That I is mean, the never street, that way. No, seriously, the streets say, like, she left him for a woman, and, and I don't know who he left her Wait, for. 
She left him for a woman? That's what the streets say now, allegedly. 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 God. And they say he left her for, I don't know. A man? I don't know. A man? I don't know. Mark. <laughs> Keep drinking. Yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know what they did. I don't know. Because then saying. Portia's husband, uh, the first husband she had on the show, he allegedly had left her for a man. Allegedly. No, I don't it's, think he left before. Allegedly, he it was caught with a man or something the news said. It's Atlanta. In the park or something. It's Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. Jesus Christ, you so damn messy. Let me tell you See, something. I'm when I heard person. Marlo was coming to, we, are, we have opened the studio on a day we are closed. My whole staff is here on a day that we don't even work. But let me tell you, Marlo Sharon can get Sharon Green, I'm so sorry. Marlo can get anything she wants. <laughs> and shout out to her. Listen, Marlo, anytime I'm in Atlanta, I always text Marlo and Catherine Bruton in a group text and say, I'm out, what are we doing? Mike, Marlo's CB. typically somewhere being a mother. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're like literally no you know what I love that. about now and, and we'll just switch real quick. I, I was saying to you the other day when we did the foster care live that I love the fact that people are now seeing this other layer to you as the mom and auntie with your nephews. Mm-hmm. And I want to talk a little bit about that because I didn't even know that you you had a brother that got killed. I did. I had a brother that got killed. Yeah, and a ne- and a nephew as well. And you know I had a brother that got killed. Wow, yeah, you did say that. It was so much with us having that conversation, I didn't even know about you. Which is now what I'm saying to people. When people ask me, like, what is the one monumental moment in my life that kind of defined the direction I was going to go? And I would say, when my brother died, I knew I had to fight to make him proud of me. And I believe I have. But when you were going through your journey of surviving that kind of experience when your brother um, died, how did you find yourself through all that? Jason, to be honest with you, I still don't feel I found myself through it. Really? Uh, it hurts because he was my only brother, my youngest brother. And when I ran away from home at the age of 10, I left him at home. I remember my mom beating me and telling me to go give him a bath. And I was like, Curtis, I'll be back for you. And I never went back for him. But at the time, I was 10. So it's something I still carry on this day. Mm. And it hurts. It's like one of those touchy situations Mm -hmm. to where it's like, I'm always like, damn it, I should have just took him with me. But I was 10. Mm -hmm. And at the time, my mom was only beating me. Mm -hmm. And I remember him getting down the streets and me and him got in the argument. He was like, you left me. You shouldn't have left me. Mm -hmm. So it's something I just walk around with and it hurts. Do do you feel like you have survivor's guilt? I mean, I definitely have survivor's skills, but um, that's why I am working with a life coach Mm -hmm. and a therapist because... That really bothers me still. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm sitting in the room like, Curtis, hey, sis is doing this. I'm sorry. Or it's something I follow. It's like a guilty conscience I still have. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to say, hey, Marlo, you were 10. Mm-hmm. I was just trying to get out of there so I wouldn't get the next ass whipping with a stinching cord or hit with a bottle or hit with a shoe. So um, it's something to this day that still bothers me, my brother Curtis. And so uh, how do you keep his memory alive? Like, what is your, what is your thing? Um, every April... Uh, when it's his birthday, I always eat his favorite food. Um, he's on the side of my bed, him and my godmother and my grandmother. I have his ashes in my closet, you know, one of my favorite places. Um, and I talk to him constantly. He's going to always be alive here. I just wish, tell people now who you love. Tell them more. Even though if they're doing things that you don't agree with, you have to tell them why they're here. Mm. You know, recently um, I've been in today's like, I think the third day of coming out of my own funk with grieving. My father died about a month ago. My friend who's Floyd's assistant, who, you know, Kichi, she died just three weeks ago. And I've been in this thing where I've had to literally consciously tell myself you you earned where you are. You've worked hard to get here. You so many people depend on you have to push through when you're because clearly you're still affected by it because I can see it. When you're going through your grieving, and it's been so many years, how do you continue to focus on finding yourself and not losing yourself in the the grief? What I've said, Jason, I've lost three people who are super duper close to me. My godmother, Mildred, my foster grandmother, Ari, and my little brother, Curtis. And I just realized we're all leaving. We're all leaving. So we have to enjoy these moments. Mm -hmm. We have to have fun. We have to enjoy the people who make us happy. And we just have to... We have to keep pushing because mm. this is temporary. Mm. And I just feel we have to, I'm going to always just live in my truth, be authentic and just live my best life. But I just know that this is just a temporary stop. Mm. So you have four siblings. Were you the only one that went into foster care? Uh, I went into foster care. My little sister, Crystal, went into foster care. Okay. And then I got her out of foster care and she came to live with me in Atlanta. Oh, wow. And my two sisters just left home early. 
And uh, yep, I was the only one. Just me and Crystal. What's your relationship with them? Because I don't ever really see. Chris, no, you see what? Crystal. She was on the show. Okay. Crystal, she has four little boys. Uh, we're good. We're the closest, mm-hmm. I would say. My sister Teresa is in Memphis, and then the boy's mom and my mom, we're not that close. But are you guys the closest because you share the experience of foster care, or just that's no, the No, we're the closest because she's my little sister. They call and aggravate me every second, <laughs> and she lives in Atlanta, and when she gets in the damn rut, she calls me. I was just with her. She was just in the hospital. <laughs> Does she ever hit you up and say she wants to slap the shit out of Candy or one of the other girls, or... Like, is she um, your ride or die? Because, you know, the little siblings will fight yeah, for you. Yeah, you know what? She's upset about uh, the upcoming season, mm. uh, what happened, because um, the person Candy and I are arguing about, Crystal grew up with as a brother, mm. even though it was her um, nephew to her uncle. Mm. What is it? If, if it was my sister's son, that's, that's my nephew. nephew. So that's Crystal's nephew, too, even yes, though he's older yes, than her. Yes, yes. So she was raised with him as her brother, though. So, yeah. So she takes up for me, even though we get into it, but she's definitely a writer for her sister. And you're now raising your sister's My two oldest kids. sister, too. She has nine, her last two. She has nine kids? Mm-hmm. Where are the other seven? Um, they're all around. They really are. Yeah, they're all around. So you ended up raising her last two kids. Why did she choose to give up her last two kids? You know what? She didn't choose to. Life chose to. Okay. But uh, now... Uh, life just shows too. I mean, you know, the drugs, the world, mm. mental health. Mental health is something that runs big in my family as well. But what caused you to say, I'm, because Marlo was free Marlo, travel wherever she want to go, Marlo, do what she want to do, Marlo. Oh my God. Right? Like now she's letting the kid drive her in a car on the freeway, Marlo. No, I'm like, literally what? before I came here, I'm calling William FaceTime, like, hey, as soon as I leave the Jason Lee show, I'm calling so we can do this project. He has to answer. Now me she's these ordering them lobster, Marlo. She's mom, Marlo. She's like on live. They in the background. There's kid sounds in the background oh of Marlo's God. house. <laughs> this is a different Marlo. What made you say, I'm going to take your kids in. You know what? That I remember that day clear as I don't know what. Was it April 4th? I want to say it was April 4th. I was at the W Hotel in Buckhead. I just had bunion surgery. And you know my townhome has stairs. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. have an elevator. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go get a penthouse at the W. I'm going to invite friends over because the elevator can take me <laughs> up and down. I have this pain patch with me. I have this cast. I can come to the lobby and look fabulous like this and hang out still. And I had a phone call from my nephews, from Michael. Mm-hmm. And I answer, he's like, auntie, come and get me. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, my mom's having some issues. Come get us. The people are here. So I'm like, okay. I couldn't drive. You know, I just had bunion mm-hmm. surgery. So my uh, homeboy, your mom, like, hey, drive me over here to get the kids. You know, my sister's just going through some shit. You know, come get them. They can stay here at the penthouse. We hang out, spoil them. So, you know, just auntie, save the, you know, put the cape on. Went over, picked them up, came on over, got the hair done, clothes. They're eating steak. And I'm sitting there, we're playing uh, Jenga. <laughs> Child, this was on our fourth year. <laughs> so, and, they, and they were with you from that point on? From that point to today. What was the decision, though? Because I'm now in my process of deciding if I really, truly want to have a kid. And I'm leaning more towards having one. Yeah, that's good. And really? people say, like, that's a love you're never going to have. Like, you're you'll never, never have experienced have. that. You're happy that you made the decision. To be honest that. with you, the first year, that was tough. Mm-hmm. And if you recall on the show, I got a lot of backlash because I worded it incorrectly. I said, oh, I got rid of the boys or I gave them up or something. I said, that shit was tough. Mm-hmm. People lie to you. Like, mm-hmm. it's all easy breezy. It's not. It's when you're taking you care. Yeah. Yes. It's not. I was new to this. Shit. I'm just used to, oh, you want a PS5? <laughs> you need clothes? You want your hair done? You want pizza? Pizza's on the way. And it was like, oh, my God, I'm in school getting in trouble, peeing on the damn toilet, talking back, getting, it was just a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was driving them 45 minutes every day to school. Mm-hmm. As soon as I would get back to Buckhead, the school would call and say, oh, you have to come get such and such. He just got in a fight. Or he, I'm like, what? I'm not gonna ride. He gonna sit his ass outside <laughs> until the school is up right. before I ride back over there. Right. So it was different and people do not be honest. Being a mom is not easy. Stop lying, I don't wanna hear that. It takes a village, Jason, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I will be a part of your village if you do. Okay. It's going to be days you're going to cry. I feel sometimes I'm mad at my best friend and my girlfriends because I feel they don't take on, like I want them on, at the sum, on summers to say, hey, Marlo, send the boys to me. Right. I thank to God give you a for break. Like, I thank God for like my assistant and my manager and the people who do help with the boys. But I feel like I took this 
on by myself because I don't have a support system like that from all the people I thought would have supported mm. me. So you're going to need a support system. Well, I've, I've already asked Cardi easy. B right here on the show. She'd be one of the god moms. She said, yeah, Rihanna, oh, I've already told oh, Rihanna. Kid's gonna be so spoiled. Not told Rihanna and Floyd Mayweather's the godfather. So oh, now, can y'all be my so now, so now you're now, <laughs> can y'all be my godfather? So now we're gonna now, now now I have one in Vegas with Floyd. I have one in New York with Cardi. I got Rihanna here in LA, so I got you in Atlanta. You got me in Atlanta. Okay, for real. because I can't Seriously. do it by myself. You definitely yeah. got me in Atlanta. Okay. I'm gonna curse their ass out though, but they go good. No, you can curse and you can whoop them too. Oh, yeah, they're gonna look I do, good, they're gonna eat good. They're gonna, they gonna be gonna, dressed fly. Yes, Tope will tell you that next time. So <laughs> do you find yourself when you're when you're because you had a miscarriage, right? Before I did, yeah, I definitely had a miscarriage years ago. Do you regret not having your own kids? You know what? I don't. So at one point, I just thought I wanted to have a baby. You know, you're in your thirties; you just mm-hmm. want a child. So I had a miscarriage. It was awful. And then IVF was big. You know, if you mm-hmm. want to have a baby, you can do IVF. I could have paid someone to use their eggs. Mm-hmm. If I, so I went to my grandmother Ari, who's up in heaven now. I said, Grandma, should I do IVF? You know, she's like, no, baby. If God wanted you to have a baby, you'll have a baby. Mm. So that just stuck to me. Mm. And I'm like, you know what? If it don't come out body naturally. Oh, so you didn't even try it the other way. I didn't even try it the other way. Wow. I didn't try it the other way at all. So it's just here. And God was like, hey, I want you to have a baby. But you're going to have two boys. And they're going to be like 11 and 12. <laughs> and they ain't going to be easy in the beginning. It ain't going to be But I ain't going to lie. It looks good on you. I, I, I literally enjoy watching where y'all going to go, what they, now they're dressing. <laughs> They, they, we're they planning Michael's sixteen, yo. I mean, sixteenth birthday. His well, I, birthday invite me. I want to come. Definitely. We're uh, I'm Uncle Jason. Now, when you come out here, once you turn eighteen, Uncle I'm gonna take Jason, you, y'all here. I'm right? gonna take y'all to the strip club. <laughs> and then you know, to ask Wendy Williams. I took Wendy's son to, and his cousin to the strip club. Wendy was like, I don't want. I said, girl. I said, y'all want to go? They see. I took oh Wendy and her God. son, and and I gave them all the ones. And we had a great time. Oh my God. No, because God. I look at when I look at your Instagram and I see you with them. I'm happy for you, and I'm also happy for them because, and, I, and I've been drinking, so I'm going to get emotional. No. As a foster kid, whether you're with family care or stranger care, you're not with your mom or dad. You're not. And so when you don't, those of you that don't have foster parents or, or have been with, or have had the privilege of being with your parents, you understand. You don't really understand where stability is going to come from. And you so don't. the fact that you built a, 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 a stage of stability and they, they, they have a bed to sleep in. They have somebody who cares for them. The fact that you're showing them how to drive and we're able to participate in it is a good thing. And Jason, also, what's big to me, what I've learned with the boys, it's important to be there, to really just to be show present. Up, to be present. Mm-hmm. To be present, it's so important. Mm-hmm. Like right now, we have an event coming up next month, and Ty's like, well, they're going to miss two days in school. I said, I know, but I'm going to be going five days, and they're just going to have to miss it. We're going to have to do it virtually, and they're going to come with me. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, and Ty's like, well, William's on punishment, and he's going to see it as room service. Beer. I said, well, he's going to have to see whatever he wants, but mm-hmm. I need to know I'm, I'm there. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes I'm like, I can't have the nanny just raising them. <laughs> the nanny, y'all need to come along, or yeah. we got to figure this out. Yeah. So just be present. When you do have our little baby, well, be present. Listen, um, by the way, Tiffany Haddish did promise me she would let me use her egg. So Tiffany's the mother. Oh, so we're gonna have a fun. We're gonna have a family. <laughs> where the Jason Lee and the Tiffany Haddish. That family, that gonna be good. That baby mouth is gonna be good. I don't know. And it's gonna be with Auntie Marlon is gonna learn how to read y'all down. <laughs> <laughs> that baby gonna be Lois. No, so um, we were talking off camera, and I was saying that I would always text Candy about how much I think she's a great mom with her and her daughter. She is Candy a good mom? You know what? I would say Candy is definitely a great provider as a mother. She mm. really is mm. great provider. Provider. I mean, I think she is. You don't think? I mean, come on. Her daughter has a poor. She provides everything for them. They get whatever they but want. But I also learned because I was a foster parent with my brother and I didn't do a good job. And I'll mm-hmm. say this and he's going to watch this and probably put on his Facebook because he's not happy with me. I was a let me give you the PS5. Let me give you your own That's room. the kind of honor Let me take you on trips and give you because I, I show my, my love language is Giving. Pay, pay, giving. I want to give and it just whatever. And when you have your baby, you're going to see it's different. It's quality time. Because sometimes I feel, what the hell are you working so hard mm. for? You don't have enough money yet? Quality time is everything. Mm. Quality time is everything. I'm sorry. Because if you give all the gifts, but you don't give the time, it's love. not going to, the it's love not, not going to translate. No, I see plenty of billionaires, millionaires that still, don't we see Puff Daddy always spending time with his kids? Always. Always. They with them, with him. Even the new one with Carisha, the, with the girl that Carisha's babysitting. I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> Shout out to Dayleon, our partners, and hey, Revolt. But one thing about it, he gonna have them kids with him, and I respect that. I salute him on that. No matter what female, 
My kids going to be here, and it is what it is. And I just feel, and that's even one thing I'm going to give Kenya props by. She always has her baby with her. Sometimes I feel she should be in a different hotel than what we're filming in, but I feel that her name is because I feel that with our group of girls, you never know what's going to go down, and that child shouldn't be in, in a hotel. safe space. Exactly, people. a safe space. Because I mean, they can't, those girls act crazy sometimes. You know, I'm real ladylike and calm and reserved. Wait, so. you brought her back up. So when her and Mark were falling out, wasn't he reading her for filth? Like, what was happening? Oh Jesus! <laughs> I was there. I was there supporting that girl. You went through that. Yes. And that's when I you, wanted wait, to go and wait, fight And Mark that's ass. when you came to her event. She tried to play you with the seats with the when the kids. Yes, she was raising. with the kids. I and my nephews lie. was mad. No, that really. <laughs> Wait, so when you got to the event, I felt like you handled yourself so well because you oh. should have acted the f out. You should have tore Jason, that Jason, I was so up. pissed inside and I had my nephews. I'm like, you know what, you guys? We're going to leave and we're going to go to Chop Steakhouse. We're going to go and eat. And I'm like, you know what? Let's go back in here. Let me let these boys know when, the, when you get in a tough situation, you still just have to show face and stand up. So that's one thing Michael and William has always has helped me understand. Sometimes you got to be uncomfortable. Yeah. You do. You have to be uncomfortable, but you still have to be a stand-up female, a stand-up guy. But did you choose not to act out because they were with you? Absolutely. Okay. And but if they were not with you? I probably would have acted up. <laughs> I probably hadn't grown. I probably would have acted monkey. But, <laughs> but I thought that was so rude given that you were you were kids. Like, too. are you trying to sit me somewhere else? The girl is, it's all about acting for Kenya. I mean, think about it. She missed that in yeah. her life, that era mm -hmm. of really being a successful actress. So it's like, hey. Reality is it for you, boo. Well, it was also probably sad to see a mother actually care for her children. Huh? Because she hasn't seen oh, that. Jesus. Stop that now. I ain't no, I'm just now. <laughs> Stop that. Listen, listen, I don't want to peach. Give it to Todd. I'm good. I'm I'm just doing my thing. Okay, so oh um <laughs> can you please you have Andy's number, right? Andy I do. Can you and you're tell not Andy? No, no, don't give it to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I ain't even asked for it. Text or whatever you want. Can you please say, you say Jason Lee from Hollywood a lot loves you and wants to hang out. Okay. Just keep telling I that. Promise okay, I'm we'll get to, okay. Him. Andy, I'm a good ally. Like I got the blacks for you, you got the whites for me. Oh All right. My God. So um should Nini be brought back to Housewives? You know what? I love Nini. No matter what, I love her. What what her and Bravo is going through, that's something deeper, because guess what? They started together. So I would love her back. I would love Phaedra back. I would love Kim back. I would love Kim all who? of them Kim. back. Kim Zosiak. Oh, I yes. Mean, I thought you meant no, Kim, Kim Zosiak, Fields. Kim Fields. Phaedra and Nene, we only got to say they, 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 they paved the way. Y'all would have the ratings through the roof. roof. Oh, no, we still don't get those ratings, though, now. This no, but season. I mean, you're going to get them this season from what you're saying. We but are. I think Kenya Moore, Phaedra, uh, Portia, Nene, you, Nene, Kim Zosiak. Yeah, and Claudia Jordan. What do you think about Claudia oh Jordan? Oh my God. That, what, you just named the cast. That That's right there cast. would burn the it internet would. up. You know what? That could even be, even if it's it's a not trip. the fit, it could be a trip. a trip. It could just be a trip. Because yes. I feel the cast that we have now, I'm telling you, is stupid. Even it's with amazing. Adora? Drew is great TV. Really? She's, her story is amazing. She gets on my nerves. I love her to death. But I mean, it's great. Don't This season, don't worry. They got it right. Okay. Now, okay. what you just named, that would be a. No. If y'all did, did a girls trip, girls epic <laughs> girls trip, epic girls trip, bravo, the names he just named. And Seriously. I would love to go, and Andy, me and you, let's take them to Brazil. Let the girls do what they do. Me and you will go on the side and we'll-, we'll Wait, are they strict there on laws and stuff? Because somebody might get arrested. Well, they may be strict on laws, but we'll create, a, we'll create an environment Maybe we go to safety. Africa. No, we are not, <laughs> we we are not disrespecting the motherland because some of the girls on the show be having bad wigs and they are not playing that over there. No. <laughs> No, they got some bad no, wigs yeah. in Africa. Do they? Hell yeah, I'm trying to get over there to do their hair and glam. <laughs> the, the launch got, a wig line? I'm trying to do it. Show my wig line. Marlo for the culture. You know? I'm trying to get to Africa and do a whole glam tour, okay? <laughs> okay, so the archive got robbed, I heard. No, it did not. Well, I heard My was, storage did. And I did have your some. Your storage guys, okay. Mm -hmm. Marlo does not have the fake um, designer clothes that Tamar said Candy's wearing. Tamar DM me. I can't. I probably not shouldn't say this, Sage. but Tamar, I've been drinking, and I'm gonna blame it on Diddy and the Daily on Juice because oh I've been God. sipping. Tamar said that Candy be wearing fake designer clothes. Now, see, I have not witnessed that in front of me. Who have I witnessed wear fake? Stuff? I hope, no, I haven't witnessed it because her stylist is Jeremy. Okay, and I know Jeremy got real. Tamar said that Candy can't sing. She writes amazing though. She does write amazing. You don't think she yeah. writes good? 
No, she's oh, no scrubs. No scrub. Every bitch, time I date one, I sing that I song. I don't want no scrub. Uh, scrub. Somebody scrub can't get no love from, from me. me. Yeah. Can't get another passenger side of your best friend ride. If you tie, you can get candy. <laughs> no, let me stop. <laughs> and then you won't have no scrub. Because <laughs> candy ain't no scrub. You will get Yo, paid. If bill. you wonder why I live for Marlo, and this, and and the crazy part is. This is not even what me and Marlo give when we're not on camera. Like we don't do this. We don't keep key. We don't. We don't talk, we don't about, talk y'all. about none of y'all. Like we literally it's just so right. It's, just, it's real life. This What's is the going first the time I key keyed with Marlo, but I knew she was coming in. and I said, "I'm finna drink and key key my ass off." Kiki Shepherd, how about that? <laughs> Kiki Sheard. Okay. No. So um, Tamar says she can't sing. Do you think she can sing though? At least Tamar she- can sing. Tamar can sing. <laughs> Who we was in the uh, hotel room listening to Tamar take she a can sing. sing? Oh, she could sing. When you saw that Tamar called out Candy for Todd allegedly trying to threaten her, be all up on her, and treat her like a, n- what'd you think about that? I thought that it was absolutely the truth because, baby, when I saw Tamar, <laughs> she just acted just like Candy. See, Candy got to learn how to act and be a different Candy when she want to do something. Mm-hmm. When, when she want to do something where a person don't believe it, but when Tamar said that, conscious like. But you said something bad about me, though. But no, it ain't cool. And, and then, you know, Todd, I mean, Todd get paid a lot. I mean, he's had a major come up. So he has to defend Kim. Wait, he gets paid a lot for what? I mean, it's just has an amazing lifestyle. I mean, he, wait, wait. <laughs> from producing. Wait, producing he was a producer movies. for the show. Oh, okay. He produced movies, okay. right? What yes. movie he produced? Oh. But I'm just saying, he's a great producer. So he get paid an amazing income. No, but is he, he really is a producer? I mean, he get paid amazing. I mean, he has like APs on and he wears all design. I mean, I knew Todd when he first started on the show. Because he was a producer. Yes. Yeah. So now. But he, he moved up from producer to house husband. Yes. Yeah. He, I mean, I mean, he will tell you, my wife got the most money on. I'm like, no, you don't got the most just because y'all brag about it. She got the most from what you're used to, but not the most what we're used to. <laughs> It'd be so funny because Jason and me are kind of, think about it. You've been around money. And it's so funny because yeah. you would sit here with them and be like, my wife got the most money. My, what money your wife have? Yeah. So it's just funny to me when you sit and you talk to people and they feel this is money. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. You okay? It ain't no money, money I want. Because it's all the money they know. That's all the money they know. But it's a come up. I mean, she definitely has had a come up. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely has. But it's not the money I want. I want more, I want more money. Don't you want a little more money than that? I this whole interview has been everything, and we're not even done. <laughs> um, I miss Phaedra on the show too, so you would want to see Phaedra's on Married to Medicine now. I'm so sad. I, I want to be over too, there with that. Does us. she have medicine? I mean, she bearing she's people. She's married to medicine. I heard. I think she's dating someone oh, okay, who's in the okay, medicine okay. business. Okay. I'll see it. That's what the street sale is. Yeah. What happened to the man you was dating? Who? I'm about to his name yeah, tell me his name. Was it? Who? I was dating on this show. Just Charles Grant doing? when I first that came one. around. I have not seen Charles. Charles, where are you? How are you doing? But it's been years, like, so he's it's gone. It's been years. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, he's Six, gone. Seven years gone ago. with the wind fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be tardy for the party, man. Don't be tardy for the party, no. Um, okay, so you're raising kids. Raising you're, kids. You have an archive where you- I have a nonprofit you have a nonprofit. Before we get to that, so the archive did not get robbed. Your storage did. No, my storage did, which is how much awful. did they steal? Oh my God, Jason, they stole so much. Like they stole in the a lot. hundreds of thousands. Let me tell you what's sad. I've seen a couple of things on the real real that they've stolen. So the real real uh, has been amazing working on me. But can y'all speed up the process? Oh, so you've seen it and then you call them. To and see I it? oh, I call them. I like sent the detectives their link and information and. We're definitely trying to get down to the bottom of who's been sending my things to the real world. So the reason why you know that these are your pieces is because they're like one of a, co- one of a like kind. you know they're yours. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. And my pieces are like right now I'm calling stores like, hey, I need, oh, Marla, I don't know if we can get them receipts from 15 years ago, right, 20 right, right. years ago. So that's it. And it really hurts. Whoever took my pieces, I'm going to find out. And I would love my pieces back. No money in the world can replace these pieces. So you ain't, you create a law archive for what? Because you love fashion, but is it because Look, like right now, like you see this, the reason why I wore this outfit is I wore this during Super Bowl is Dior head to toe, but I'm also big on re-wearing. And people have too. guilted me into not re-wearing things. I'm you, listen, this costs so much money. I'm going to wear it again. You better rewear it. And you're going to wear it again with denim. You can wear it with gray pants. Switch you can it wear up. a black boot. Okay. You're going to so switch So you're it okay up. with the rewear. Oh my God. I'm a re- you're going to see this shit again. This bright ass yellow and pink. You're going to see these boots probably tomorrow with some little Daisy Dukes and a graphic punk rocker t shirt. But you, so you started Law Archive because what? So let me tell you the truth why I started Law Archive. 
And another thing I want to thank Michael and William for. When they moved with me, my upstairs was full of rolling racks of clothes. Mm -hmm. That was like my extra closet. Mm -hmm. So when they came, I'm like, oh, I got to move my clothes out. I came here to L.A. Mm -hmm. And y'all got so many showrooms mm -hmm. with designer pieces mm -hmm. that you can rent. And I'm like, we don't have this in Atlanta. So I'm like, I don't want everyone renting my stuff in Atlanta just to go to the club, but I would love to have it on television shows and in the industry. You know, like red carpets, mm -hmm. close the deal with Netflix yeah. downstairs. For your for your for the archive. Yep. So you're gonna see things from the archive. So they can come pull it. They already came and pulled it. Wait, are these all pieces that you originally had? All pieces. So I, I could take all had. my clothes and put them in a show. In the yeah, exactly. You could take all your designer pieces, but keep it in the entertainment business. Yeah. It's too much when it's just they want to go to the club here and they want to go here. Right, right. Keep it for red carpet, movies, shows. Uh, magazine shows. That's all. But and if they use it them, and if they rent it and they f*** it up. You get 20% of what that Dior sweater costs. If I want to rent that, I have to pay 20% of the original price. But if they mess it up. If they mess it up, you already have their credit card on file. And you charge and gonna, them for the... F you're going to have to make sure... You know, you're going to pre-charge your card to make sure it's a real... Hollywood Larkai. Oh, there you go. I can't say your name because you're assuming, but no, whatever. No, you're fine. Okay. Wait, so you did that, and so you, that creates a whole other stream of revenue, and a you still other, own the clothes. I just finished up... You know Tammy Roman, right? Yeah, of course. Unfaithful. Yeah. So I just did a yeah season two with Unfaithful on VH1. I did a hundred and probably a hundred and five looks with Tammy Roman from the archive. And it's, I feel there's nothing wrong with renting for us. We hate doing it because we have the money. Yeah. But I mean, sometimes if I want, I mean, I rent it a couple times, but I wish I would do it more because I'm like, people rent my stuff. Right. But I feel that there are some pieces I don't want to rent. Mm. Some pieces just like, no, that's my, you're not going to, it has to be a special person. It has to be like a Beyonce, a Rihanna, you know, someone really special to be in it. But would you still, can you still re-wear some of the stuff that's in your showroom? Absolutely. I go to my showroom and shop. Really? Before I came, I'm like, let me go pull up at the archive real quick. Right. I forget some of my stuff. And I'm right now in the process of shooting my catalog. Mm. So I've already started, but I have so much. That's shooting everything that's in there? Every single thing. And then do you put it online? No, not online. So it's like right now you reach out to me. You're like, hey, I'm such and such with Netflix and we're doing a movie, which happened to me. And I'm like, okay, um, my uh, catalog is coming over. And they're like, hey, we want this and we want this. Mm. So when the movie comes out, I'll let you know and you'll see a lot of things from the archive in that movie. And then you'll deliver the it to them. Yeah. No, well, they will come. Netflix was no joke. So well, professional. Netflix is, you know, I'm not next to Netflix. Building. You know, I used to live right yeah, downstairs. Oh, you're not here no more? <laughs> no, I moved out like a month ago. Really? Yes, I know. And the guy downstairs was like, hey, Miss Hampton. I'm like, I know, I miss you guys. Damn. So it was just for when I come in town, instead yeah, of yeah. paying for hotels, it yeah. was better. So um, Netflix came. When I tell you, Jason, so professional, they came and they checked everything. They took pictures of it. And the check came in three seconds oh. from corporate. Yeah, they got money. It was Netflix. Keep bringing in the movies to the archive. I love you. You're amazing. <laughs> okay. Did your house get robbed too? No, not robbed, but um, they kicked the door in. They Four kicked, armed guys kicked the door Were you in the house? I was not. Oh, I was in the you house. Were how, you were Yes, there. I was in the house. And William was on that level of where they kicked the door in. We had just got back in town from Michael's birthday. And there was a whole thing going on in where I live in Sandy yeah. Springs. They kicked in my door. They robbed Mariah Carey's home. And Ghana? Uh, yep, yeah, Ghana. It was a lot of us. They targeted Sandy Springs. Um, yeah. Was, was this bad. during the day? This was at night. We were home maybe two hours. And I did an Instagram live saying that I was still in L um, Houston. So they thought you were gone. They thought I was still in Houston. And it was crazy. The detectives had came like a couple of days before to tell me that I was on the list. I'm like, me? Not Worldwide Candy Wait, or so someone with more things and more money? Like, good lordy. I was like, how the hell did I get on there? <laughs> no, but What do you think they're going to steal if they go to Candy's house? Oh, her songs that she writes. Really? <laughs> I don't know the lyrics. I well, well, Kim Zosiak already stole Cartardi from the party. Oh, Lord. No, but Jason, it was bad. Like, I went through, last year was rough for me. Yeah. Seriously, like, all BS aside, I still don't sleep good. I'm right now in the process of moving, looking for a new place. Oh, where out I the town safe. home? Yeah, I love my town home, but I'm going to rent it out. Do you love Atlanta? I love Atlanta as in when, when you move to Atlanta, it's like Black Hollywood. Mm -hmm. 
You go in the hospitals and you see these black doctors and black lawyers and you see black people just being so great and in positions you never see really when you come out to Hollywood. Unless you go to Phipps Plaza. Exactly, until you go to Phipps Plaza. Until someone tries to kick your door down, until someone robs your storage. So I feel where, that, where I'm at with Atlanta, I don't want to be in the city anymore. Yeah, yeah. I want to move further out, like next to a police station. <laughs> so uh, that's just where I'm at. But when I tell you Sandy Springs did not play, yeah. they assured me that, hey, we would get these guys. They got them. And, oh, they caught the people? Oh, my God. They caught it. It was 21 of them. Did Gunna snitch on them? No, Gunna ain't snitch on no damn body. You better stop. Don't your ass come play with Gunna did not snitch on these people. <laughs> when you look at the Ricos, they handing out like Halloween candy. Do you th- what's going on in Atlanta? Everybody getting locked up. I mean, everybody Yonda, locked Yolanda up. Adams is somewhere singing, the battle is not yours, it's the DA's. What is happening? <laughs> Jason, move on. <laughs> we need Jesus down there. We need there. Jesus. I met um, Keisha Lance Bottoms. Yeah, I, met I her love at, her. I met her at the White House. People mm-hmm. loved her in Atlanta? You know what? Uh, some did and some do. I was just at an event with her for Lynx. The president of Lynx spoke and Keisha did amazing. She definitely interviewed her and um she was real. It was just really deep, just being in a room full of black women, just saying amazing things and you know, trying to make a difference. So the other day, you and I were on live talking about foster care. Mm-hmm. It was me, you, and another woman. Erica Thomas. Okay, now she's a legislator from out there, right? Yes, she was. Because yeah. I've seen her at a couple of Catherine's events, and I've seen her. Yeah, her I, I, uh, Catherine worked together, and they have a, I want to say they have a foundation together, but they worked together on a project. But I didn't know she was in foster care. Oh, yeah, she was and, in foster and care. me and her are high school dropouts, but you finished. I mean, no, not high school dropouts. Her and I didn't go to college and became successful, but I didn't know you went to college. I went to college and graduated from the University of South Florida. So put some respect on your degree. Oh, yeah. They definitely don't never do that. Y'all can clap it up for a degree. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, Jason. That means a lot to me because my girls on Real Housewives of Atlanta never give me props for that. All right. Well, listen, here at the Jason Lee Show, we like to give our guests gifts. So because you are here... As a housewife, even though you've been a housewife to all of us, um, this is your first year. We want to make sure that we celebrate your first year. So let's bring her a gift. Where's our first gift? I'm getting a gift, Jason. Okay. My girls have never given me a gift. Oh, my God. This is, um, <laughs> yeah, like, my cake. This is, uh, make sure you come on, come on in, come, come on, on in. Come on, yes, come on. You know, this is my assistant, oh, Andrew. This is our one year. Let's clap it up for her one year, y'all. Thank you. Jason, this is so sweet. And like I said, I said it before and I'll say it again. Andy, you did a great job because Marlo has earned this peach. All right, but we're not done. We do other gifts too. Can I, have... I do a wish though? Yes, go ahead, wish. Lord, I hope I have a second year, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't work for NBC Universe. I work for Hollywood Unlocked. All right. Now, we also have other gifts right here on the side. Gifts? Oh my, Jason. This is my other gift. Oh my God, wait, what is this? Our friends at Day Leon. But, but look at the back. Read the back. Mm, today, drain me. Oh my God. <laughs> I love, you have no idea how much I love this. Deli- oh my God. Y'all, Jason, you did that. No, listen. I get Day Leon bottles, but not money. The Monogram only like TikTok that. I've ever done mm-hmm. using somebody today else's voice me. after doing the Breakfast Club was that. Mm-mm-mm. Today, drain me. No, literally, today, drain me. <laughs> literally, today, drain me. And the other gift. You've got more expensive gifts. Than oh, me. my God. Mm-mm-mm. Today. So now How did you know? Do you know how special this is to I have me? a show producer. Okay, listen. We do our research over here. And those are nice champagne glasses. And oh there you go. Oh, my. This is, this is class. This is great. I got to get a kiss. Damn, I can't. I get one out. Throw it. Yes, I so, love you. So Thank now you, you have baby. those and you can, you know, put that put you whatever have no you want. idea. This is going to be in my house and not even Ted. When you go viral for these moments, for these comments, whatever, do you do you find it humorous or? You know, Jason, I'm so humble and I just stay humble. But I woke up that morning. Everyone's like, Marlo, you're viral. Mm-mm, today, drain me. I'm like, what? Because it wasn't something. It was, it was just me talking right yeah. in my mouth. And it does feel good. And just to see. All the love, the dogs, the cats, everyone uses it. So <laughs> yeah. it's like, wow. But I stay humble. I mean, I don't even. Well, I have to have a meeting with Marlo's team because of all the tea that she spilled today. So today's going to drain me, too. <laughs> all right. Um, today drain but me. But <laughs> now, this show is all about sipping cappuccino, although you may be confused. But here's where we get to the tea. It's the games. Because we play a lot of games, so here they come. 
All right, so look, I'm not messy at this show, it's the games. And this is the first game, it's called Tear Tweet. Now, I'm gonna ask you a question, Marlo, and oh you can either spill the tea or you can send out the messiest tweet that I've designed for you and you can't tell nobody for two days that I'm the one that told you to tweet it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so here's the tea. If you had to remove one of the housewives from the cast, who would it be? Uh, Kenya. Damn, well, I guess you won't be tweeting. Okay, well, <laughs> bye Kenya, bye Wig. She's All just right. too evil. Real is evil. Yeah, you know what? She just doesn't have a good spirit. Everyone's uncomfortable around her. She's just not a team player. She's just. Do you think she it's has because a, she's mean spirited? Do you think it's because she never really got that motherly love? I don't know what it's for. I just feel that she need a therapist. She need God, Jehovah, Jesus, a exorcism. Bible, exorcism, everything. She's just has a mean spirit. Bedroom candy. Yeah, she need that too. She need that as well. Please, candy, send your friend the whole entire club. You go over there and do it to a lick under her armpits. <laughs> she needs it. Not candy licking under Kenya. To try candy, or bring it out of her. She'll relax her. <laughs> but do, do, when you look at Candy, though, do you think she gives good head, though? Oh, Candy wouldn't do anything for me. Like, she wouldn't be my type. Well, you don't give me, you don't play with girls. No, 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 you no. Don't, I you don't play, but it. if I did play, they're gonna have to look like this. Like wimp? Like this. <laughs> like this. <laughs> she would not be my type. I hate Marlo Hampton, period. <laughs> Why she tried to say Marlo Hampton wasn't even your, somebody said Marlo Hampton wasn't your real name, and you had to pull a, you had to pull a Barack like Obama on enough. him. I had to literally send like my birth certificate. Why did you have to do all that? Like, cause I'm like, girl, I was so mad. Did you see me get so upset? <laughs> I'm like, wait, you lying? Don't lie on me. But they went, they went as low as the birther. Like, we gotta prove the birth certificate. Girl, I've been arrested. It's like half of you can't my even find prints. your mom's, but you want to find my birth certificate. Girl, like anyway. Listen, this is my show. I own it. So don't be like Coyle Ray and try to call Diddy because Diddy mm -mm -mm. can't cancel this. Today baby. drain me. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love fun. Uh, all right. Okay, next game. This next game is called Smash Your Past. So on the side of your chair right there is a paddle. You can grab that right okay. there. It's okay. Smash Your Past. And this is where I'm going to pretty much put up a name of a celebrity. And you have to say whether or not you would smash oh, or Lord. pass. It's really simple. Okay. The first name is chairman of our network, Diddy. Damn it. Okay. He he sponsors the show and he is the reason. Smash or pass, does that mean you would mess with them and get money or you would be in a relationship with them? It's your game. You play it how you want. I would mess with him and get money. Smash. But not have sex with him. Why not? I'm a virgin. <laughs> For this year? No, like um, forever. I mean, ain't none of them any good. If you're gonna mess with them, mess with ones with money. That's why I love. You got money though. I know. That's oh, why I say I oh, smash. Oh, I'm gonna oh. try and get a couple but dollars. No sex. No sex. Okay. Well, Carisha has that anyway. Exactly. Okay. Next name, Kevin Gates. You're an Aquarius like me. You crazy. He's crazy, so I would pass because we would never go along. Ever? Never. We would not get along. I like him. We're so different. We get energy from people, but we would bump heads. But he likes to do nasty, real. He wouldn't do no nasty. Me. That's why I say I pass. But I love you, Kevin, because you're an Aquarius. I want you. I see you, but we can play each other. Okay. The next name, uh, Alex Rodriguez. That's the one who was married to. Uh, he was dating J Lo. J -Lo. Right? Yeah. They didn't make it. Did, were they married? I don't know if he was dating. Oh, they were engaged, but they didn't he's make it all the way. He's fine. He's he's really good looking, and he's yeah. rich. Oh, smash. You just smash too? Oh, yeah, I'll take that Damn, down. Damn, we can share. He took it down. <laughs> I mean, I just want to make sure he's retired now, so I got to make sure that he's body tight, because I really only <laughs> with, like, you got to have a real tight body. Not for me. I like him big, fat. Like, I need a little fat so he can be a little insecure. Really? I just need him to have nice teeth, good breath, and a nice, you know, cr good credit. You could not have sex account. with a fat man. You're lying. Did you ever see Charles Grant? No. Yeah, I had a lot of sex with him, Charles Grant. And he was fat? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Show him a picture. You guys have him up here? See if you'll smash your pass on him. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, you know I love you. I love him. <laughs> Is he going to smash? Hold you? on. <laughs> this is not him. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't him. That's not him. That's him. him. Would you smash or pass? Okay. <laughs> this is not him, Marlo. He has great personality. He's a Virgo. Marlo. 
His eyes are yellow. Oh my god. Move on to the next one. Marlo. <laughs> Marlo. Marlo. He won the Super Bowl champion. Marlo. Marlo. He got sleep Jay- apnea for sure. Jason. Does he have sleep apnea? Lee Charles Alon. Okay, He's a allegedly. He was allegedly. <laughs> Marlo, you had sex with him? No, I'm a virgin. Okay, go. I'm a virgin too. I'm just saying that, but I'm gonna start all the way. But I don't go by look. Seriously, I don't. I go by personality. Clearly. Okay. Sure. Did you like him more than the billionaire though? Um, I didn't know. They're different. They're different. They were different. Totally different. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Totally different. Okay. They're different. Ooh, that was a key key. I, <laughs> Marlo is trying me. Cause that was a lot of hypertension. Okay. Just yeah. I don't go by looks. Look, seriously. I do fat shame now that I'm I've lost much. all the way. You know, I lost 123. Don't pounds. your ass. I know. You no, but good. like they call me fat to the point where they rushed me to surgery. So I just do it to help my community. Were go you to afraid surgery. to get to surgery? Get surgery. My friend was there. Hell no! I said, cut. You the go out. with him. He wasn't in the room, but he was there when I did the consultation. Yeah. How they was telling me all the complications. You could die. You could, okay, well, I'm gonna die anyway. Cut it out. Yeah. I was scared when I went and did my last lipo. And I'm like, okay, just go to sleep, girl. So you've had lipo? Yeah, I've had lipo like two or three times. Did it hurt? No, I was asleep. No, but I'm afterward because you got to wear the faha. I was shopping like the next day. But Marla, Seriously. you have a shopping. If I, if you have any addiction, if y'all ever say my Marla's man, on drugs, her drug is Neiman. It is. No designer. drugs. Never did drugs. Yeah. Won't do drugs. Only shopping. Shopping is my It'd addiction. be the foster kids that already been through shit that ain't going to do no drugs. Oh, I'm not. we do- already saw y'all. My little sister just had a BBL and I was so pissed at her. I cursed her out. Chris, I know you're going to be pissed. I'm telling your business. But um, she, when she was in uh, the, at the hospital, yeah. she kept not, or refusing to get the pain medicine because she needed it so bad because you know she couldn't wear the fire hop. But she didn't she, want to take the pain medicine? No, because her, um, her blood count went down. Okay, okay. So they were like, you're swelling up. That's what's causing all the pain. And she wouldn't take it because we're so afraid of how drugs destroyed our right. family. And I'm like, look, bitch, you're going to have to take this down. When you did the lipo, you did the painkiller. Oh, pain, I did. Oh, I did. That's the best part No, when part I got this? home, I did not. Okay. No. Um, when I tell you when I had my LASIK, I wouldn't even take what they you gave me. You did LASIK there. surgery without, without I was taking... like this, and the doctor was like, why is she hyperventilating? I'm like, come on, doc, wait, I got it. You're not going to die, Marlo. You're not going to die. And I just saw that laser come right. Wait, but you took, but wait, wait, wait. But they did the LASIK, but you took pain medicine. No, I did not. Why they did LASIK? I did not. You are a not. different type of gangster. A different, because I'm not going to lose my damn Birkins and Chanel and vintage. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not selling my shit for ten, twenty dollars. No. I Only Marlo would think about designer bags <laughs> at the time she's getting surgery. Uh, uh-uh. um. When I got through getting my hair transplant, you know I had my edges done. No. Have... Wait, wait, Can wait. I lift it up? No, do not lift it. We're not going to require you to lift it up. But wait. Look, my edges have grown. <laughs> They're so amazing. So, when even when I got this, I wouldn't even take the pain pills out the works. I mean, you know I'm proud of these edges. I'm proud. You know how black girls don't have no damn edges? No, because I'm going to I Turkey to get my now. edges redone. No, you can go right to where I went to Chicago. Drew referred me to this doctor. She got her edges done too? Yes, but she still wear the wigs. I don't know, but she got her edges done. Thank you, Drew. I'll give you your props. You did. I'll be getting edges. And this is my second time I went to him twice. What was the process of getting your edges done, though? Uh, you go there, and they, they drug you out like a little. But afterwards, I have still all my payments. I but wouldn't even take them. What, is the, what are they doing, though? Cause... You're, oh, I'll show you the pictures okay, afterwards. Okay. I have it all right Back of my head is shaved, and then they just went in and filled in where the edges were. And This is why them. Marlo, Andy, this is why Marlo is great for the show. Let's keep going. Okay, <laughs> this next person, Shaq. Oh, I love a big old black man. I would definitely smash. And Shaq is rich, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, Shaq, 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 Shaq you... I love because he just seems so fun. He's just like, he'll tell it. But I'm probably not his type. Guys that big and tall usually like short and light skin. Uh-uh. Like, I'll be uh-uh. too intimidating. Oh, you don't think so? No, I was just with Shaq recently during Super Bowl at his event. And Shaq, you know, you and I just talked recently. I told you, you know, I got the hookup game. So here I am with Marlo. You could be a real uh, house hey, husband hey. of Atlanta. <laughs> No, I don't, want a, I don't want a husband. I love Shaq. Shaq is good people. All right, this next person. Shaq is amazing, though. One thing I will oh, say about you, Shaq, he doesn't know me, know me. But um, one night, the boys and I were out in Avalon having dinner at a steakhouse. And my nephew's like, that's Mr. Shaquille O'Neal. And I'm like, at least he's with a woman. I'm going to ask for my nephews to be able to take a picture with him. And he took one. He was so friendly, so nice. I still have the picture. Shaq's the real deal. Wish I could real, be. real, real. All right, this next person. He's under fire because he's dating somebody in the Kardashian household, Bad Bunny. Um, I'll pass. 
You a passing bad bunny? Yeah. That's not your type? Not my type. I like a good twink. He's cute, but not my type. That's your type. Yes. <laughs> you so damn well, crazy. I would. I'll pass. Bad bunny. I know you successful. I need a Victor Newman. Who's Do you that? have him coming up? Who's Victor Newman? Oh, see, you young, baby. Young and restless. Let me go. <laughs> oh, I know who Victor, I know who that Victor Newman is. You, that's the Victor Newman I would like. <laughs> he don't look like what you just showed me from the other. He don't, but I like him. It's something about him. Who I like what, bad bunny? I like Ugly or a distinguished older gentleman. I would tear the lining out of Bad Bunny. <laughs> Bad Bunny too fine. I don't need nobody in the mirror with me. And I don't need you to be what? a little ugly, little insecure. I can say what I say. This is my show. Okay. Bad Bunny. I, Black I, on your show. What I Bad Bunny that I what? <laughs> All right, anyway, okay. This next person, he might slap you though. No, the f he won't. Actually, no, you might slap no, him. No, Chris Rock, he would get slapped. He won't slap me. <laughs> would you date? Would you smash or pass? Chris is too damn funny. I'll pass on Chris because Chris is so funny. He'll be talking about my edges and my Wait, that's my got to turn around. Oh, no, pass. Pass? Okay. But I love Chris. He's so damn funny. He'd probably be clowning me and making me mad. <laughs> when Will Smith slapped him, what'd you think? He should have slapped his ass back. <laughs> I would have told that <laughs> room up. It would have been loving hip hop Oscars. <laughs> oh, baby, Chris. Right. <laughs> but Chris did it real smooth and classy. And got $40 million out and of it. That part, Chris, mm. I'm learning from you. Should Jada get 10% or not? Nah? No. Okay. No. I don't want to bring you into that entanglement. I know, don't. Okay, next person, Quavo. Quavo? No, I'll pass on Quavo too. Quavo's but I hot though. You know what I love about Quavo? Um, Quavo, I don't think I tell stuff, but we rolled on the plane together one day. He was so amazing and sweet. And I think I was leaning on him, laying down, going to sleep on his little tiny <laughs> self. But we had a great conversation. I love his mom. He's too young. My nephews and his mom will probably kill me. He's a good guy. Yeah, but, great guy. Great, but great your interview. nephews would think you are lit. My nephews would think, but they'll be like, Auntie, really? No, Michael and William are so territorial. I don't really? Think they want are they protective? Them. Yes. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, this next person, he may take you to the moon. Who? Elon Musk. <laughs> you gonna get a free, you gonna get a free Twitter What's verification and everything. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. He's go a billionaire. Ahead. I know, child. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, right. Since you forced me, Jason. <laughs> now here's the deal. People think Elon's not attractive, and I don't know if it's his autism. He's very that attractive. That, I'm an autism supporter. He's attractive to me. Very attractive. For an old rich white man. Oh, very. Okay. All right. Uh, this next person, speaking of old rich white man. Brad Pitt. Oh my God, definitely smash. Brad smash, is so smash. fine. Yeah, I'm gonna smash. Yeah, yeah Brad he might is so leave fine. you for your friend though. I don't give a damn who he leave me for. But before he, when he leave me, I won't. He won't. I won't be broke when he leave. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be broke. When I'm you not leave. gonna leave the way I came. I ain't gonna leave the way I came, baby. <laughs> okay. Well, if you go out with this person, you may not leave the way you came too. Jonathan Majors. You're not trying to get put in a headlock. I don't even think he even like black women. Does he date he black women? He dates white girls. Yeah, so I pass. Okay, cool. If you don't date what your mother looks like, How I dare you pass. put him on the cover of Ebony Magazine all oiled up when you know he was getting in the car with the white girls? I'm okay with him getting in the car with the white girls, but it's just that I hate when a man doesn't date with who created you and you were in a black woman's body for nine months and now you're in a little trouble because you went with a sister. Well, he goes on every red carpet with a cup half full. I bet you it's half empty today. Oh, damn. God bless him. Anyway. All right. Speaking of rich white men, I'm going to smash this one. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Bezos, the, the owner of Amazon. As William says, he's rich. <laughs> <laughs> I need to start hanging out with Marlo more. No, I, I always said I couldn't date a white man, though, because I just don't know. like Shit what we going to huh? It's so sad because I love my black men. Don't get it twisted. But our black men tend to want white or mixed women. White men have treated me the best. Mm. I hate to say it. I'm just really? being real. Oh, my God. Do they treat they you like They love my a... edges, my deep voice, my big feet, my age. They love everything. And I'm sorry. They just do. I've had the best luck with white men. Do you know the gays live for you? You know that. Oh, I know that. I may even marry. A... You want to marry me? Because you, you get Tiffany, money now. You and Tiffany. What? You get money. No, I will be on one with you, too, because I'm not that big on having sex. So I'll let so you we can be together thing. for like the life and the yeah, like we look good travel together, together. We dress good, travel, have fun. We can go pick up together. Over there with you. Yes. yes, I pick the ones I want. I go on this side yeah. of the house. You go on that. Get side us a huge you. compound where we can have our own sides. And Listen, the kids can we play got in the, the house. My can babysit them. You ready? Mm -hmm. No, but yeah, they can babysit them. I guess <laughs> if they're really masculine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Today's, Today's rain me. <laughs>
<laughs> Just switch my cup over. Switch my glass right. over. This next and last final game is called Erase the Shade. Now, if you've ever badmouthed somebody and never had anything negative mm -hmm. to say or been in publicly with it, this is your chance to be able to erase the shade that you may have I created. I never badmouth anyone. Well, badmouth anyone. One will have to tell. The first thing we're going to go to is what you said right here. You said, and I'm the one that pressed a rich white man. I date who I'm attracted to, white, black, brown, doesn't matter. I dated one white billionaire for five years. I was in a full-blown relationship, and that makes me a prostitute. You see here who was really chasing after a white man, Real Housewives of Atlanta. And it's a picture of Kenya Moore with a white man. Wow. That's facts. That's the truth. Mm. And the truth shall set you free. Set you free, baby. Is it going to free this broken ass phone? Was this your phone? That was my phone. Because one thing about it, bitch, I keep my receipts. <laughs> I keep my receipts. Even if we got to fight through the cracks to see gotta it. We got to fight. And I had to call somebody because you know I'm the worst <laughs> with technology. I'm like, how to pull this shit up? She didn't send me a picture. Because she wanted to be on my team so bad and really admired me and love. Like how I'm so confident I can be myself. She's like, look, girl, look where I'm at. You should have came tonight. You know, you see I posted whatever she said. Yeah. Hey, Diva, where are you? I know you want to be me. I know you mad. I can't. <laughs> okay, the next tweet. Friendship coming from the same friend that passed out on the ground laughing at my wig event. Who was that about? Oh, was that Portia? Was that about Portia? I don't know. Did somebody else uh, tweet that or was it me? Listen. Was that Portia? That was from Portia because when I had my wig event and Kenya came in with the band mm -hmm. and she passed out on the floor, so I was pissed because I want her to be like, don't do that to my, you know how we are now. Even if the shit was, so I'm like, Jason, I got you. But right then and there, I'm like, get the fuck up out of here. <laughs> Why is this man the size of your ex? Oh, he is. Because you know what? I like to be warm at night. Stop you know, I it. like for a person to keep me warm. <laughs> You're rich enough to afford blankets. Stop <laughs> Stop <laughs> this, I don't want them too fine. I don't want them finer than me. Oh, I do. I don't. I do. No, mm. no, no. That, your ass going to be stretchy. You're going to be, you gonna be two pounds with something finer than you. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next, okay. The next tweet. <laughs> that part. Okay, you re you retweeted this tweet from the Bravo Chronicles that said, "Which Real Housewife of Atlanta housewife are you most excited to have back on your screen?" You retweeted it's out of you, Sheree, Candy, Kenya Moore, and Marlo. You got the most, and Candy got the least. Well, you, the people have spoken. Right. Why Why Bravo don't look at this? Shit? Does Bravo not pay attention to the metrics? They see it. That's why I'm a peach holder now. Mm. Kenya only. I mean. Candy only got 9.9%. You didn't even get a 10. Well, I've helped her out this season and mm. last season. I like Sher Sheree's son is so fine. Sheree is everything. He is fine. And she's fine as hell, too. She is mama fine. Okay, next tweet. Bravo, watch what happens live. Just like 2.5% royalties you get from the hits you wrote 200 years ago with 20 other writers, the song is, the song says. Okay, this is clearly towards Candy. You think? The only thing I can say, I'm going to give props right now. Uh, on the part that said, uh, with uh, 20 other writers. You know who one of those writers were who I love? Oh, Tiny. I love Tiny. I love Tiny. And that then wrote some and sing some She wrote a lot of Tiny has been drugged so much over the years, but is like I the nice. No, but she's the nicest person. Realest person. Always. Oh, my God. Has shown I was me gonna, so much love. Because when I was going to fight her agent, she actually <clears throat> tried to stop it. Okay, anyway. Just lick the candle at this point. Okay, next mm. tweet. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm blaming everything. Is that cream cheese? I don't know, but I'm blaming everything on Daily On because mm. what I found if I don't eat breakfast as I drink and p talk to people like Marlo, just the worst comes out. Of me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, when <laughs> I can't even read right now. Hey, one hit wonder, Shamari Devoe. I don't want your life owning almost four. Owing almost $400,000 in back taxes and sharing the legend with other women. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I strive for. Focus on your husband and career, not me. I am not your storyline. I guess I am. I'll be ready for our next press run. Oh, wow. Who is that? Shamari, Shamari Devoe. Devo she's, she's married to Ronnie Devoe from um, New Edition. I know him. But, but he has a wife? Who's Shamari DeVoe, that's his wife. She was on the show with you. That must have been years ago. I mean, I don't even remember who his wife is. But he's amazing. He's a legend. <laughs> Wait, who, he, she's sharing him with other women? I don't know At her. the time she was? You don't know her? I don't know her. Come on, Mariah. Move on. <laughs> Next. Wait, do you want to take it back or no? <laughs> I don't know You her. said what you said. Next tweet. 
This show, I don't even this, recall. This show is not messy. It's the games. I promise you. Not even developed. Leftover baby weight is one thing. However, what bride to be doesn't want to look skinny and fashionable on their wedding day? Those pictures last a lifetime. Nene invited me for my honest opinion, and I gave it. What happened? Oh my God! What happened there? What wedding was this? Oh. Eva. Was this Eva's? These leftovers. Y'all, I really don't remember this one. I just baby fat. Eva don't have. Over. It was Eva. Eva don't have baby fat. She oh. just had the baby. Oh. She probably should have had on a Spanx. A, sp- a Spanx? I mean, I mean, come on. Let's be. If you just had the baby, just pull on the Spanx, double tape it. We know better. We know how to suck it and hold it in. You know that. You know Do you that. want to take this back? I, I don't usually take it back. Okay. What I say. You take say it what back you, isn't. You yeah, say I said what, you what, you what said. I said. And if it was wrong, it's wrong. So this season on Housewives, what do we see from Marlo? Because I know you're giving um, fashion. I know I'm going to tell you what you see from Marlo. Look, I'm going to stop you from whatever you're asking. What you're going to see from Marlo this season, you're going to see me being my authentic self. You're going to see me um, working with a life coach. You're going to see moments when you won't even think I was working with a life coach. And you're going to see Marlo dating. Mm. And guess what? I'm going to be dating someone that's fine. Someone that you would approve of. That I know? No, you don't know him, but he's fine. You're going to be like, Wait, you gonna be trying to come get Is him. he my type? He's your type. Marlo, I will fight you type. on national television yeah. for it. Yeah, I'd probably love fight you. And he's Jamaican. Okay. But one thing I would tell you about him, he's amazing. He doesn't care what you like, as long as you're a respectable okay. man. So like, you, as long as you're not rude and disrespectful. Yeah, but yeah. he's fine. Really? Fine. And you didn't pay for him like Kenya did? I didn't pay for him. I'll never pay for a guy. No, okay. no, 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 no. He cooks for me. He makes good, amazing Jamaican. He might got something on me. And the boys love him? No, but no, I have not let the boys meet him. Really? No. You got to at least be in my life a year before I let the well, boys Kim meet Well, Kim Kardashian, you. after her and Kanye broke up, she let the kids sit on Pete's lap. Yeah, we're different. And my mom wouldn't even let me sit on my dad's lap, so the boys definitely- Because there's weird about that. Yeah. Even Santa Claus at the mall, we don't know that. No. Right. You know our moms ain't go for that. They, days. My mom all. like, get off your Uncle Ben's lap. Uh-uh. My mama get was you. white and didn't let it happen. Listen, my mama didn't play that. You can sit on your daddy lap, your uncle lap, get your ass My away. mama sent me to foster care to make sure I didn't sit on none of my uncle's laps because I was away from my whole family. Anyway, we're going to end this here. Make sure you pull up. Bravo, you did a great job bringing my girl Marlo on there. Pull up for Marlo. We're going to all support Marlo. Even Jason Lee and Hollywood Unlocked is going to watch the House Sides of Atlanta because of Marlo Hampton. I love you. I love you, Marlo. All right, thank you.